perhaps we will be going to, and it looks to be pretty similar or pretty standard as we have Chalet, Consulate, Skyscraper, and Border all getting taken out during the ban phase. And then we have Bank, Clubhouse, Cafe, Oregon, all in that order, and Labs. Uh, one of the first times we're actually, I, we might actually see Labs here as our decider on the night. So LVC going with their first map pick of Bank. Uh, and they'll be starting on the attacking side. I think this is going to be a really interesting way to start things up as Bank has a lot of different layers of depth that it, that, that it can bring, especially in, if you need to bring a hard breach. Yeah, we're really talking about a place uh, like Bank. You have that those really large open areas that sometimes become relevant, but a lot of the time you do get into those corridors. The elevator shaft is always one to really cover. Uh, and then when you have to get into the actual vaults, uh, into the offices, like you, like you said, the hard breach is going to potentially become a necessity. Uh, and Bank is, a, with all the reworks that it has gone through, uh, always been a very fascinating place for that. I, I think that it will really be able to uh, show some some depth here. And I want to go and highlight, we can look at the, the records of both these teams and their their differential great stats as, as we go spiraling into our, our band phase. I'm looking to see something pretty standard, maybe get like the Ying off the board. Or oh, wow, that can be the Habana as well. Good reason to do that is we have a whole bunch of hatches and the drops that we don't want to have to contend with too, too much, especially along that first floor. So I think we can see a lot of more prominence in the basement site. But I, I'm definitely looking for uh, on our, our secondary band. I, I I still feel like we could have a Ying or just maybe any sort of soft breach on, but it's going to be the Nook. And um, I, I do feel like these are probably quite educated bands and um uh, nook's ability to just round corner and, and jump all across uh, the map undetected it's definitely something prominent on bank yeah it very much is uh of course those are the attackers banned out and look, look over to the defenders um bands are i mean yeah solace is not a really uh, no, that's, huge that's surprise no coming out here i was gonna say i mean you always have like that one you're like yeah that's probably gonna get get banned out but with the operators increasing over the years it's become harder and harder to really predict it uh, and the azami getting out as well on the other side uh we will see uh well we won't see those four operators but luckily there's plenty left for these teams to, to play with uh, and this is really going to show a little bit about how these teams approach maps, like what, what sort of play style they're going to uh, adopt, if any. Uh, and I always like to see, like, you know, where do they go? What do they feel like is important to them? How do they want to approach things? Uh, currently, the way that this is being set up by um, uh, Lebanon Valley uh, is very interesting to me. Like, you do have some range, but you also have that hard breach plus the Montaigne currently picked up. Now, if you do attack with that, you, your strategy seems pretty cl pretty clear cut. You know, scout a little bit ahead with the Attackers Twitch, disable some utility, the and then just hard breach and bunker up with your Montaigne in front of you. See if you see what you get. You know, it's a very honestly very yeah rushing sort of sort of aggressive opening strat, but can be very effective. Yeah, we'll see if they go and opt for any uh, last minute changes to their offensive lineup. One thing I want to go and highlight for UND Green is just the choice to go for this second floor no immediately. Worries, hey, have a good and one. I know that's not as prominent and not as needed now to go and barricade the entirety of Banana Windows, but just oh, a little change go. in the mentality. And I like that you have Sloth playing down below. And the reason why you actually want to have a player, especially one with like a super shorty, and have those opportunities downstairs is to deny any sort of vertical presence from the opposition. If they were to go downstairs with a buck or a Zofia or an IQ and just try to start blasting up, that would go and essentially nullify any sort of presence that the bandit would have on tricking walls. And that's assuming they don't go for the window. There's a lot of speculation as uh, LBC as, you, as well as UND. They, they have a lot of options on how they want to play. And I want to highlight the last time these two teams played, they went all three maps. This was in week six of the season as it was actually a 7-5-5-7-4-7 win for, I believe, UND Green. Oh, it's good here get, to get a little bit of context. I'm just uh, going in to get a look at this awesome game we've got between LVC and UND Green. Uh, what are we expecting here, Binks, if you could go ahead and remind me? 
Well, I'm mainly looking for LVC to have a good aggression, uh, especially utilizing the window repel. And um, what, what I'm typically expecting from this team is utilizing all of Square, but most importantly, working in as you're reliable, as Puxio selects the first kill on the spot. Ray out is it's going to go right back and forth reliable inside a supply closet. It's going to be in a very pivotal position. But Brick taking them down. This gives a lot of map control back into the hands of UND Green and really stalls out LBC as they need to go and figure out what exact positioning they have. Bennett playing on the mod tank, pushing up right through Banana. They're going to have Renegade waiting and wishing to see what opportunity they have. Cole spraying out. We're going to have a Thorn actually take out Plexios. As things balance out at a 2v1, we're going to have the Montang having to jump through Banana. Careful for any Frost Mats, not going to have to contend with anything. Peering out, this is going to be Brick with a very nice headshot. We can go and see the whole, the entirely tight angle, sniping right into the head. And I really like the, the hold that we had there from UND Green, as it was very cold and calculated. And you had a lot of different layers. The moment you spring the trap, you're just going to get caught out. And uh, very well played. Yeah, LVC going for a classic lobby side overtake where they're trying to take that Monty and just kind of shove them into this little gap that you have because you can't play on Banana, right? But UND Green was able to just completely shut that down. They weren't able to get the Monty up far enough before, before UND Green was able to start the retake, make sure that they were getting those trades in and they were able to adapt as the round was going on to ensure that they didn't leave too big of a hole or allow Lebanon Valley to actually take control of Banana or Trump. And that made it nearly impossible for Lebanon Valley to get control over that round again. As we saw, even though they did at one point have a man advantage, Lebanon Valley was able to, or rather they failed to actually perform that and translate that into a victory simply for the fact that UND Green, right, they're playing on all sides. And at a certain point, once you yeah, no longer have that hold, version. you're going to fall apart. Your push becomes nothing. And UND Green, Five even though they lost the man advantage, was able to bring it back simply for the fact that they had pressure in too many places. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. Moving towards our action phase, LVC has a lot to make up for. And I think the basement site is going to be exactly the spot to do that. One of the bands I want to go back and remind everyone of is the fact that we no longer have a Habana on the board. That's going to mean that there's a lot more of a reliance on the Thermite, as well as Emporium on the Capitao with those secondary can openers that could be able to utilize in, in opening the hatch. No, you will have the Kaida Coal, which will result in some tricky business, but interested to see exactly the route selected as Emporium's made their way. Assisted by the Senate down to the bottom of blue. Droned out will be Renegade Mossberg shotgun ready. Spraying. Drone is still available. Great job using the Montang. And there's going to be an actual oh. kill for Reliable. Oh, that is so unfortunate. Just spraying at the wrong angle. And the problem with the stairs is that elevation. You're going to have that altering head level. The Warden. That the is deeply it, unfortunate. It hurts. It really hurts. I, I'm interested to see how they can go and bounce back as the Montang was a very pivotal part of their push in the first round. I agree, but I think a bigger problem right now is the fact they've still got this Warden Mossberg playing on blue. They're just going to have to swing this. They're just going to have to go hard, and it's going to be really hard, especially considering the fact that Warden, he's got those special glasses. Flash is going to do absolutely nothing, and with two more kills going in the direction of LVC, now UND Green has given themselves a decisive advantage finally be able to remove the warden from play but they're still in a 2v3 very little map control no walls open and a minute and a half left to play all you and greed needs to do now is sit back and let lebanon valley walk into their crossfires i talked about springing that trap previously and that's exactly it you're gonna deploy some of these smoke pellets where available the bolts don't even get caught by jaeger ads's which make for a great ability to clear but you use that utility once, you're not going to have it again. Reliable collecting onto coal. Plant being attempted inside a default by Reliable now. No C4 in the hands of UND Green to deny. Brick to go down and Lebanon Valley clawed back. What a big second round Emporium. Great job holding the case. 
I mean, you when that nitro doesn't hit, suddenly you're looking at this like, oh, we're gonna actually have to swing into this beautiful play by Capital Lebanon Valley revived from the dead there at the very end, just simply for the fact that they found the one pick and they decided this is something we need to play off of. Once you remove the player from that position, you have just enough of a gap to get in, start that plant, and when your plant denial doesn't hit, it's just got to hit, right? There was absolutely no option for them other than swinging through smoke, through fire, anything they could to try and keep this plant from going down. And it didn't work. They weren't expecting the Capital to be playing such an aggressive angle. And because of that, suddenly they're falling apart. Attack this retake has no fall. grounds, nothing to push from behind it. And at the end of the day, that's a failing combination. It should have been UND Green's round. Let's be clear here. But unfortunately, just that simple little mistake of not being able to stop that plant, not being able to have enough control. Heck, you could even send a player around to get a little bit more active there. But none of those things actually happen. And at the end of the day, you got to make it happen in order for you to win the round. Our on the other side, Lebanon Valley did do a very good job of taking advantage of that. I do, I will say, the choice to close this hatch, I think, is very interesting. It limits the amount of ability that you have to actually support your Warden in that position. I don't think there's too much need to support the Warden there. Warden really rolled through and did a lot of damage just playing in that one singular position last time with the Mossberg, right? I, I think one Not too the lack of utility there that they used was the, the lack of Capita. I know the Capitos uh, incendiary bolts uh, were utilized down inside a server later, but I think that would have been a very prominent tool for for dealing with the warden early on, and I think it was just a little bit of a missed opportunity. Uh, I digress, though, as we, we have this round underway, we are going to have the Jaeger of Sloth. It's mainly the first point of contention, depending on where these players enter in from, like Flexio is going to catch the Jaeger of Sloth, taking a little bit of chip damage as they rotate their way through Teller's office as Flexio swings, expecting them great crosshair placement. Flexius will swing the man advantage in the way of Lebanon Valley. As this push seems a lot more methodical and really ensuring that they have the clear out that they need. But look at this brick playing inside of more of what I'd like to call a rat angle inside a cafeteria as well as admin. This entire area of the map is very important for the attackers just for the sole importance of the hatch drop. We're to a initiate a lot of pressure through the hatches. I want to highlight that we don't have any dedicated harbors. We have Davies as well as the Senate. As Renegade still holding down these stairs is going to be the absolute nightmare for Plexios. Down goes the line. Still E1Ds in their possession. Cole is going to be able to find with the Nitro. Davies connecting onto Brick. This trade game back and forward. We knew we were going to see. We knew both these teams are coming at this game in a very close sort of mentality. Now, very important to note that with the alibi off the board, all, all of this second attacker. floor coverage is now in the form of LBC, and with a minute to go, they need to make their way downstairs. Really strong positioning at this point from UND Green. It's going to be difficult for them to penetrate into the site, but the Warden here might be the weak link. He is a ways away from where the primary push is happening, obviously, mostly through these hatches, but with no counter pressure from Lemonon Valley, they could have a bit of a wall in front of them just with this crossfire here with frosted playing in garage and coal as well in the red hall unless they're able to clear one or both of these players out of position this drop not likely to be successful it goes out doesn't catch anything even though they know where coal is playing that cage but he's gonna move back as another nade is pulled it's not gonna find anything here this crossfire is going to remain intact and dropping here suddenly looks just as dangerous as it did before with lebanon valley not making any ground at all they need to find something anything push through garage push down blue but none of it's going to happen there's the first drop absolutely nothing massacre uh, shots coming out from und green but ultimately it evens out but they're not aware that the last player is in garage frost is going to finally clean it up and there it is one more round for und green perhaps the round they should have had but a very different round from the one prior I think what I, I want to highlight is that, that that that's why you need to have a safety player all the way in garage because you, when you set up a crossfire and I, I think something that's often lost is oh we're both holding the same angle that's a crossfire the proper crossfire is when you guys are both on completely different angles holding the exact same thing that is the form of the drop so that'd be holding all the way down uh, vault hallway you and, you and then as soon as you have that player inside of um garage you just have two different angles different completely different players able to hold the same angle 
um, and that allows for such a clean line of sight. And I think UND did a great job of utilizing that understanding that LVC has that lethality, even when they're just all dropping through the same hatch, that there is going to most likely be a kill or two that results and goes their way. Great way to play safety, and I think that really speaks to the, the depth that this roster can bring. Looking at the roster that Lebanon Valley is choosing to bring here, very similar to what we saw last time. Are they going to have the pressure that they need to actually punch through the UND top banana defense? It's going to be the question of this round. If they can solidify Monty's position in banana and get someone behind them, this UND defense could fall apart, especially with these players playing down below. There's not going to be a lot of opportunity for them to push out through the site. They could, however, still deny this push very strongly from below. Not entirely certain that with this below hold, the actual play through lobby is going to be entirely effective right there's a really good chance we see a lot of counter pressure coming in behind lemonon valley that prevents them from being able to effectively make their way up mana that's going to be a big question here are they going to fall to the players playing in tellers or is this going to be a round where lemonon valley suddenly asserts their dominance and shows yeah we know how to do this push i i think it's very much going to be the the scenario uh the, the latter where um I feel that the LBC is going to almost repeat their exact time and try to correct the things that were made. But I, I think in this battle of um, adaptation, yeah, that, that might go the way of UND just because of the, the prominence you have in the defensive end. Early on, not a lot of firefights going back and forth yet. I not necessarily answer your question, but I, I, I feel like LBC is very unpredictable in, in that same sense. A bomb has been located. Yeah, I think a, a swift, aggressive take up the banana stairs could be exactly what they're looking for. If they're able to get, like, literally just a tiny modicum of control there, that's when that hold starts to fall apart. But it doesn't look like that's really what they're going to be doing here. Right now, they're just going around fishing for picks here. I think that's a good play, right? There isn't really a hole. They proved that last time. There's not a hole in the defense of UND Greed to exploit on that lobby side of the map. Because of that... LVC, Lebanon Valley, they're looking for something here. Quick firefight comes out, nothing found yet, but a complete rotate by the Monty, I think signifies a complete switch of the push. And with all the players on UND Green, not all of them, but many of them playing below still or over near Banana, this could be hard. Firefight and stock, it's going to go in the way of UND, taking the first advantage of the round and completely shutting down that push. Lebanon Valley now looks like they're going to struggle trying to find a footing inside the map anywhere but that could be it Take on a coal starting us off in the direction of lebanon another one but even back out promptly now sitting at a 3v3 38 seconds to go lvc needs to start making a much more aggressive entrance into the site flexios and emporium will do just that leaving sloth as the lonesome defender on the castle back inside of square sprang towards the site they know the plant is near inevitable at this point with 20 seconds to go they can fight try to go and delay and ensure there's no plant going down do they have the information they're looking right at it we also have the montank shield covering for it sprang towards big window plant will be successful sprang towards the montank and it's going to be lit up around 25 hp remaining i have to try to isolate as many 1v1s as possible but with three players alive and good communication this should not be possible this is lvc's round to lose Axios at a sl tiny sliver of HP has information provided by the Montang as they push their way right back in towards Banana. Looking for the Twitch's head, is able to see it, but not in time as Plexio secures the kill and LBC will even things out two to two. Yeah, talking about that round, I think that was a really great adjustment by LVC. They just were poking and prodding at that front side, found absolutely nothing. And while when they went around, they lost the initial pick, they were able to swing it back around. I want to talk a little bit about that 1v1 as well, because you have got to have the confidence. And genuinely, I think that 1v1 could have gone a completely different direction. Sloth playing that castle, right? He's got the UMP, it's a hard gun to use, but he shoots that player off those windows. Suddenly we're looking at a round that is doable, especially if Twitch plays that the same way, right? Those peaks, those aggressive peaks, those could have been taken advantage of. We could have seen a Castle Monty 1v1, which is very different than when we're looking at a 1v3 where you've already got Finca on the rappel, right? There's absolutely no way. The only way to kill that player is to jump out if he gets that pick early on, maybe it's a doable round as soon as he misses that pick. Unfortunately, or fortunately, if you're Lebanon, 
round goes their way. I mean, Lebanon did play that very well. They set that up. They were able to isolate the player of the castle on top square. But once they've done that, they know they can just put the plant down. And maybe a little bit too aggressive with the way that they played that. But at the end of the day, they did it. They got the job done. Inca didn't die. Twitch didn't die. They get. They got the plant down, right? Beautifully done once you take a good look at that last minute of the round or so. Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. As far as the initial approaches here from LVC, they did a great job previously of getting uh, early access towards the building, but I, I think we might see a little bit of change in mentality for them as they are, are, are going to largely focus towards... Uh, I want to emphasize, like, clearing and securing coverage in the building. I think that's something that, that has been... Um, rather lacking for from you and D to go and challenge that but rightfully so um i i yeah i find that i'm more in like a moral battle with myself of, of what the best option is for for this team and uh, exactly the the interaction between them because there's clearly a lot of depth and the one thing i've really been noticing is the amount of prep towards the other side and, and vice versa where you and D green always seems to have a good idea of what lebanon valley could be attempting to do but once again, it, it could also play into LBC's control. Opening pick going in the direction of Lebanon Valley, and with this Sophia playing on the rappel on these north side windows, that's a good position to be playing in, especially when you've got that middle floor sight. Now, they need to clear these players out. They are still at a minute and a half. At some point, they're going to have to start getting aggressive. They're going to have to start cleaning up some more of these players. But as long as they play for trades here, they will be, I mean, chilling like a villain, right? They're going to be on top of this. And LVC, I think this is, the, this is already their round to lose. They already know where most of these players are. Brick even has already been spotted out. We saw Finka shooting at him through the wall. They still know where he is. You watch these three players coming towards him. He's able to get one, but that's going to be it. Brick finally down. Puts themselves in a 3v2 with the nice support from a Nitro below. Still definitely a decisive advantage for Lebanon Valley going into the last minute of this round. Cole's going to be one of the main players in this. Good on the Wamai for having the ability to stay alive so long and around us. That's going to be a lot of util that's going to be captured, especially from the Sophia Davies as well as the Nades of Emporium. We'll see if it comes down to that. However, 50 seconds to go. Pressure being promoted toward the reinforced hatches as well as through double door. I'm interested to see if LBC opts to go for another vertical drop if they leave a player up here to hold a case from up above case is in the pocket of the senate who's previously been playing on the mon tank switching over to the box spraying up above it's going to be the wamai to fall down goes cool as a result of davies quicks execution with a breaching charge up above all left up to renegade gonna have to try to deny this plant best they can their hatch is okay plant is successful and they see it. They're going to be able to secure one kill. Send it down with the plant. Looking for two. Can't find it. His two guns are staring right at him. His Davies, with a quick reaction time, knowing they have to cover the plant best they can, is going to be able to secure that round for LBC. What a great job accumulating all that information. Excellently done. Way to think about what you need to do there. You know that that mute's pushing, so you're going to have to get aggressive and make sure that he's not allowed to do that. Right? He kills the planter. Suddenly, your round is over so as soon as they realize that the mute is pushing hey he's getting aggressive we have to stop this which let's be clear very excellent choice by the mute that's what he needs to do he needs to try and stop that plant unfortunately didn't have the c4 from before that's a little bit of util wasted and we did see that did successfully get a pick but at the end of the day it's not going to be enough to actually stop you from Attackers planting right and you're still going to end up in a 3v1 there at the end like i said definitely lebanon valley's round to lose and once they got that pick putting it back into a 1v3 it's yeah it's just gonna be plant plant is gonna go down using that corner it would have definitely been interesting to see if they had the nitro but alas that wasn't the case lebanon valley looking at the lineup that they're bringing here doesn't look like the same server take that they made the first time rather the open take that they made the second time this is, I love the last round and a half because you've conditioned your opponent for so many, for five of these six rounds, and you now have an opportunity to go and change things up, and there, there's no harm in 
than changing it because yes, you might it might result in a round loss. But you've already secured at least an even split, and if you've gone and adapted and understand how your opponent is going to be defending these final key operator switches, the Senate taking that Thatcher trying to disable as much utility as possible. I think that's very very important for for the basement, and I think that's really just screams just a corner plant and trying to get it down with the smokes the yings there's just so much utility they're able to dump the way of the site break gonna be on this first engagement doesn't quite know where they are realizes now that they're gonna be above and decides to just skedaddle just a little bit the ones who apply pressure but oh, already having control over this much of the map this is scary. This, could be, this looks a little bit like a lobby <laughs> drop. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't think they'll actually go through with it. They, they've got enough knowledge on the player, especially with Reliable playing in the lone position. Oh, that's open? That's I, I'm really Please. interested to see what happens here. I, I don't see... Uh, I think if they were going to do it, they already would have done it. They need a can opener other way because there's no soft. Oh, they got the DMR. I stand corrected. They have a DMR on the side of Twitch, so you would be able to open the hatch. Um, uh, it's, it's very interesting that this extension from UND creating That's a lot action, of tension. It, I know you. Can, it's either going to pay dividends in the ability to just cut down the members of LVC in half, or if they're spotted out, it could be completely different. A minute twenty-five to go now. LVC seeming stalled out and uh, I, I'm getting I'm getting the emphasis that oh. we might see that drop. we're gonna have it LVC prepping tempting us essentially playing around with us at, at, at this point I think you and D might be reading into it they're looking at this and going absolutely nothing's going on that they're preparing for something so we can just take it out right you and D okay, green though gonna suffer the first loss by Plexios quick trade back from process the critical garage player from before another trade as well but the plant's going down in cctv bricks behind though he might be able to stop this he doesn't know where he is oh he's gonna stop it that's huge and suddenly we're back in the 2v2 correct critical player was originally gonna be taking the first engagement didn't find it now this stayed alive to stop the defuse and suddenly lvc finding themselves in a tough position they do have the crossfire across red here so it's gonna be hard for und green to actually take any sort of an advantage but they don't need to. They don't need to get aggressive. Lebanon Valley is the one that's going to be looking for these picks, and they have no clue about this player's sloth on the hatch, and suddenly it's up to Emporium. He knows there's the one on the hatch, and he knows where the other player is too, but he's got to find the picks. Nearly no opportunity for him because the player is there, but he can't pick up the diffuser. He's going to make it into the other side as well, and he's going to be able to start planting, but only one second left. No. That's not going to be it. Brick's no, going to be able to stop a second diffuse on the round. Beautiful round from Brick, hitting that last come around the flank, right? Honestly, well yeah. done. Good That's read Brick's by round. him. That is entirely Brick's round. Just the ability to understand the timing of it all. Yeah, that that I, I want to replay and just I want to be able to have the chance to go back and look because I believe that there was down to point one second. That bar was empty when I was looking at it as it was getting denied. Uh, very scary situation. It, for for lbc to just have to lose that round and it was a very nice change of pace from what we saw previously so i uh, we'll, we'll see how how it develops but i i like that as a first half from lbc and i think it being a 3-3 split speaks absolute volumes to to the closeness between these two teams as previously i i and my prediction is that this one could easily go all the way um just off the sole factor that it, it came down to a seven five seven five seven four in, in the last week of regular season, and there, there hasn't been much change since then. I, I know it's a very basic. Gonna... Go ahead. Oh no, no, go ahead. I, that's all you. That's, that's even my point. I'm just acknowledging how base it is to, to I, say what. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> Starting us off in basement. Gonna be Lebanon Valley switch over Attackers the defensive side and slightly and different hold. They are gonna be bringing a Mira, something that we actually didn't see UND Green take advantage of, despite the fact that it, I mean, she's on the board, right? I mean, it feels so trivial to be like, okay, Mira on basement on bank, uh, we just bring her, right? That feels so default, but wasn't done by UND Green. Maybe could have saved them, I think, one round. Um, but at that point, you're looking at a 4-2 split. I would say this split already 
gives an advantage to Lebanon Valley simply for the fact that they took an even half on their attack. They looked solid, very adaptable while doing it, and they won a lot of their firefights as well. Like, we can't understand how important that is at the end of the day. The first person shooter. Right. But we're going to have to see how this plays out. Rick's going to be the first initial contact on this creeping drone in. I love the LVC mentality of the extension. We saw a similar thing from UND Green, but the fact of the matter is how much time it delays and just the sneakiness of Emporium, who still has that rotate down through the elevator shaft in first floor. It adds a lot of versatility, it adds a lot of depth, and as the players now start to move their way down towards admin, they have a few different options on, on how they do it. LBC still can continue to turtle strat all the way back down. I love this, acknowledging that your opponents will be able to take a certain amount and securing any sort of frag potential, and the amount of doubt that has now been planted in the mind of UND Grease, they push up every single second of this round matters, and a lot of it is going to be wasted. UND Green is stalling. Bomb located by attack. If we could have a look at them, it just doesn't seem like they have anything there. I mean, they're gathering information, but they don't have anything to play off of. There is a gap here in red, but they're not going to take advantage of it. A little bit of a gap maybe in server as well, but we saw earlier there are two Goyos on that. They're not going to be able to play through there, especially with this little time in the round but they're looking for something right they want to hopefully give themselves a bit of an advantage going into this execute right you'd assume so cloth is going to be prepping for a potential hatch drop getting inside open has a few different options i think we could see a full and commit almost spontaneously what long angle is going to be held is the communication from lvc communicating exactly what they need to so many questions to be answered as frosted will make an explosive first impression onto plexios that's a top frag going down from lvc lots of denial opportunities you have two c4s one in the hand of the mirror one in the hand of the kaid kaid will fall Plant finally being attended by Renegade right along the corner. Can they get there? Davies will fall. That's a push from Garage. Great job from Cole. Completely unexpected. Plant will be successful. Cole sitting inside a garage, having a lot of different options. Air jab set up. This entire push is now gone completely awry as UND Green sprung the trap and LBC was caught lacking. Reliable. One option here to push up in through the air jab gets stumbled. Not yet fall, but there's the crossing that you're looking for. Cole inside a garage with a huge 3k. We'll get UND the 4 to 3 advantage. I mean, I am going to level. You can't let them run through CC like that. Uh, we, we saw a lot of adaptability from you or from LV, LVC thus far. I don't think that was one of their finer moments they it looked like they had already considered themselves having won the round they're at a 3v3 nearly a 3v3 Defender when there were two seconds left on the timer attackers. they knew plant wasn't going down but the players on und green just decided to get aggressive and that's exactly what they needed to do they needed they knew that they needed to give themselves an advantage they needed to find their firefights and take them and that's what they did and lebanon valley just didn't look prepared to actually be pushed on like that they didn't look prepared for an aggressive play and ultimately it just felt like a stack of cards lvc not quite able to hold those crossfires and especially with that garage play that was unexpected 10 seconds to insertion i mean it just looked phenomenal by und green just for this the simple fact that they're pushing in they're taking they're getting aggressive they know exactly what they need to do in a situation where climb is dwindling and they have a disadvantage on man count they just said hey we're just gonna take this round and we're just gonna do it right there's nothing to lose we have to take in we're gonna go and push in through garage we're gonna find these picks give ourselves the advantage and it worked out beautifully one of the big things as we look towards round eight and your word of the match is probably going to be extension how do you justify the right amount of extension to ensure that the site isn't taken, but you still have a good opportunity. Frosted making their way through this front door is going to be 
quite pivotal as it allows for multiple castle barricades to be melted, as if it were even there to start. I think the, the primary element that you want to be looking out for if you are on the side of LBC, if you're supporting LBC, you need to have a really good idea of where this push is coming from and how they can properly prevent it. They're going to be repelling right on in without droning. That's what's going to happen. Plexio is collecting a frag onto Renegade. Case now dropped inside of second floor executive hallway. They have double window to contend with. They have half a barricade to protect their positioning with their location. Most definitely has been noted. Popping the nade, the process is going to have to rotate. Unfortunate timing there. Still going to go and prep it. Waiting for it. Nade out. Plexios having to drop back. Good thing they're in the prone position, taking a little bit less damage from it. Brick, taking it reliable. Now down below, they still have case up above, and the Yokai doing watching. Brain, Frosty makes their way in. Now with minute 22, this is a little bit more time than LBC was probably anticipating to have to deal with. Especially from the vertical control where every element of archives can be breached from above. But Emporium doing a great job. Flexio spring the trap and making their way back upstairs. That results in a 2k for them. They are forced to rotate right back towards their site. But they can still rotate back. They still have a good opportunity. Spotted on the default will be Brick. Towards open. Triple kill for Plexios. This is going to be an overextension. All left up to Frosted on this second floor. Has the opportunity. Has the nade. Looking to drop right down. Davies ready. See the drop. Calls out for the team. All guns and aim towards him. Plexios with the 4K. Down goes Frost. In great positioning by the Frost. I want to point out the aggression by the defense of LVC. And I think that's exactly what they needed in the last round. They became complacent with their position. And at a certain point, what they did is they just let all the cards fall into the hands of UND Green. They don't know exactly where their players are. They don't know exactly what's going on, but they're not poking or prodding to try and gather information or anything along those lines. UND Green was able to just set up and make a perfect execute. And they had absolutely no cue, no clue. Lebanon Valley this time was able to take a page and be like, okay, let's not do that again. Let's get aggressive. Let's Attackers do an excellent job of can. actually getting the information, understanding where they are, right? We saw beautiful crossfire coming out from the player and printer, the warden, and Plexios on the main stairs. I mean, beautifully done. The main stairs player knows that someone's pushing up that hall. The player and copy swings it, and you're going to get the kill. One of your two players is going to clean that up. One thing I will say, though, despite all of this praise that I have for LVC, Lebanon Valley, that is, UND Green, you gotta, you gotta drone the top floor. I mean, it seemed like they didn't have any clue that anyone could possibly be playing up there. Even though there was setup up there, there were castle barricades. You have to know that someone's playing up there. It seemed to me like even in the prep phase, they didn't send a single drone up there. They had no clue anything could possibly be going on up there. Lose your ace immediately. Drop the case on the floor immediately. And while you do end up getting the trade back, Lebanon Valley did a very good job of falling off, giving up the control, and just saying, okay, you guys have earned this, but we're going to fall back, we're going to get our information, and we'll live to fight another day and fight they did. We'll see if they repeat their mistakes. And I, I, you know, the third mindset that that last one was probably one of the most convincing wins we've seen, but that came off a 4K. I don't know if you see. I'm quite curious if Plexios can continue that from up above. Plexios will, playing on the dock, gets a kill and is able to rotate all the way back down. Goes your Maverick, the hard breach, or one of the hard breaches, still the first to fall. Emporium, the next to go. Another high fragging member of LVC, as it's really been Plexios and Emporium, the fragging duo of this matchup so far, really assisting each other. You have to continue to adapt as a result. A minute 45, and I like that the puzzle pieces are slowly starting to fit into place. It's lost ability to go and maneuver right through square. And I like the use of the zeros. It's good for, good for providing information. You need to get it into positions you don't yet know. Whether or not that happens. In, oh, go ahead. Yes. You're good. I'd like to highlight the way that... Flexios has been enabled, right? He's not just making blind swings. He's not just getting aggressive off of nothing. He's there to 
adapt and to play off of what his teammates give him, right? Teammate says, hey, there's a player jumping in alone. He knows he's got that. He makes the swing because he has the information, right? He's not just going willy-nilly, taking things. And as well with the play on the main stairs, he knows he has support there, right? Lexios, to me, demonstrating not just the fact that he's mechanically gifted, but as well the fact that he's smart and able to play with the rest of his team effectively. With 45 to go, UND is once again having the pressure put on them. You have the Sledger Frosted up above that could go and wreak absolute havoc with the soft breach. As that's exactly what they plan on doing. But 4 to 4. I want to acknowledge Ram has yet to be deployed upstairs. They are more concerned with trying to clear out this lesion and finally do a static with fall reliable. Trying to spray towards Davies taking a critical amount of damage from the drop from the hatch. Davies spraying down to confirm two kills. Looking back towards Square, trying to find a third. Nope, they're not going to find it. Coral's back. But there's Reliable and Plexios. Another fragging duo. Secure another round for LVC as they go up five to four. I'd like to put an emphasis on a fact in, in that round. That it just looked so much like the first defending round for Lebanon Valley, where UND Green just kind of took their time, set up, put themselves in all sorts of different positions, and then collapsed onto the site. But this time, a little bit different. Lebanon Valley was able to actually play off the utility they had put in place early in the round, right? We saw Fenrir, we saw Legion, and that made sure that despite the fact that they could be making an aggressive execute as we saw, right, it was down to the last 20 seconds, suddenly you know where everyone is. You're going to be finding these clean, easy kills because you're Lebanon Valley. You know, you have Flexios, who, might I add, is now 15 and 6. Absolutely monstrous scoreline. And it's simple at that. But I do want to say as well that it could have not gone that way. UND Green, with just a little bit more information on the site, a little bit more direction on that execute, suddenly we're talking about a very very different round much more Five similar to left. the first basement defense that we saw from lebanon valley i'd like it's to know time. whether or not lebanon valley has enough coherence to recognize that they are lacking in intel in specific situations okay, can we just check server right now or are those walls left soft no, it's gonna take i believe they are and they did that last time too yeah okay interesting this conflicts with my old siege mind. Uh, oh, it, never mind. No, we, have, it, we have the mirror. We have the mirror. I, I, I take that back. Yeah, we have the mirror. But I think as well that did contribute to the fast execute style that UND Green was able to pull off last time they did this, right? They have the okay. mirror, so they're going to be able to play through it. They're going to be able to get aggressive off of that. But uh, it didn't work last time. They didn't play it well enough. They didn't, you know, hit their anti-plant denial, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Is it going to work differently this time? Are they going to be expecting an aggressive play, right? Are they going to make the adaptation? Lebanon Valley is a team that we've seen make good adaptations, even mid-round, able to make an audible call and just say, hey, let's go around to the other side. Are they going to do that here? Are they going to be able to do that between rounds? From main lobby. Rank for it. Oh, that's such a huge kill from Plexios before getting refragged. But the gridlock down off the board is going to free up a lot of congestion along the site. Reliable. Still sitting inside a copy. Has a few different options. When you spring the trap as late as possible. It's the drone should not necessarily come around to this area. But it will. Spot it out. Reliable. Bring around. Here comes your gunfight. Reliable to win that one out. Reflag refrag by Sloth. And that's going to be controlled, not going the way of UND Green on the second floor. With a minute 15, that's exactly what you want from LVC. They got their trades and they got out. You got a Twitch drone reaping absolute havoc downstairs. As you're also going to have a whole bunch of zero cameras Emporium to take out Cool. This aggression, this lack of security that UND has, and that's the problem with you losing your gridlock early on. You're not going to have the claymores. You're not going to have any sort of safety Attackers besides a drone, and that, and that clearly was not there. And your castle of Emporium's all the way up on the third floor, 40 seconds to go, and this is a very scary situation for you, Green. I was going to say, you're not going to be clearing out that castle, but there it is. Renegade was able to get up, get around, and while that did waste a lot of time, we know 
that you and D Green, no issue. They have no complaints, no qualms with playing on limited time. And an aggressive entry from Renegade doesn't find the pick. And the second swing as well going to shut that down. Where is Sloth? Their play this round was clinical up until that point, making such an aggressive play unnecessary and forcing your final player, the Zero, to drop into a crossfire. Just a difficult situation for UND Green that I don't think was handled quite correctly. Just a little bit more patience, which is kind of funny talking about UND Green saying, hey, be a little bit more patient there. Yeah, it's, Round Ghost, 11 on Valley. It's crazy to think about, and that's, I believe, the, the only time we've had two consecutive rounds, one or more than a... Yeah, I believe that that's the first consecutive round win that we have, uh, besides possibly the very start of the match. Uh, LVC having match point, I want to highlight this, is their map pick. So this is expected, but UND Green are not out of it just yet. These teams are one that we know can just continue to go the extra mile and pull out as deep a strats as they need. And this is the finals. You're going to pull out everything you have. This is a best of five, let me remind you. We're going to in here for the long haul. And I'm interested to see exactly how this team tries to adapt. And I like that the Senate is going to be taking the pulses. That's going to be a very necessary information game to know what you and your UND Green have in store and how exactly they can maneuver around their opponent. Hang on, is the Senate Palpatine? I don't know. I sw that I that swear I, am I remember a player named Palpatine. Um, no, I, I, maybe I'm imagining things. I mean, it, it is Palpatine anyway, right? Like, I think it is. Palpatine is yeah. Yeah, no. but in any case, back, back up and in these in this position where they're gonna have an aggressive extension on this top floor, like you said, word of the day, probably extension. And look at how aggressive this extension is. They're not playing on the top floor, but they are playing on the top floor. This extension, strong upstairs, and that's going to allow them to take their time, and more importantly. Take UND Green's time, which they have not been giving themselves <gasps> enough of. And there it is. Playoff wow. the intel. Green pick by, El by Plexios. Yes, he does get traded out, but that's, that's going to be two jump. nades. Uh, that, that's tough to lose Plexios uh, of all your players and where you the top frag to go. Uh, I do think that that is a good trade. I'm interested to see because it, it is. Yeah, be I, I think in terms of utility, is it, it is a good trade. Yeah. If Ross gets all of it out. You don't want to go and sacrifice your Romai. You don't want to sacrifice your Echo or Pulse. Castle will be the only other one in the form of Emporium, but not in that sort of position. And finally, just an absolute utility dump from UND Green as they realize, oh, we're at the two minute mark. Procrastination. Well, we may be students. Can't really apply that to Rainbow Six Siege. We want to still make at least a little bit of a dent inside of this offense before That's rushing right in. Renegade on the ace is going to be very important and interesting to see how they go and try to use the opportunity. They see the player unable to find it going to prone. Drop shotting is no longer a thing. I remember that one all the way from back in the day, and both players are going to be able to escape with their life reliable, staring in towards the square, trying to find one. You have two rifles to contend with, but there's the amplified scope and the DMR of brick, yeah, resulting in a great victory. The Senate. Now the next player to have to contend with the lion, waiting for them to pop down the stairs, able to find them. That's the second kill for Brick. Great job as LVC's entire off that defense sort of folds away like paper. Renegade, the next player to go down, is able to capture the head is Emporium. Renegade revived. 2v3. Emporium with a huge shot onto Brick. Cool now having to rotate in. The player of Renegade is up above, dropping into open. This is gonna be a two-fronted assault from the south. Whether or not they have the information on Davies, and if they can stay alive long enough to make good use of that yokai drone, because that it's an ace, you have a good, clear way to get into sight. Whether or not Emporium is yeah, ready you mentioned losing Plexios early may be painful, but apparently Emporium is here to, I mean, clean it right back up. He's going to be going off this round, and UND off of a little bit of over aggression, not putting themselves in positions to trade. Now suddenly they're looking at a 2v2 out of a 2v4 advantage for them. Davies is well able to play off site. They have no idea he's here and he's got the Echo Drone. I mean, we know that UND likes taking their time and with another player gone, they're going to be probably taking even more. Never mind, it's going to be Emporium. Cleaning that up, very clean 4K. Going to give them the map. LVC going up 1-0 against University of North Dakota in the game.
going to our bands, we might start to see a couple more targeted bands. I know that we saw LVC on their attacking and take the Montang a considerable amount. So we'll see if UND considers that a big enough threat to ban it out. But LVC having the first band really is going to be able to set the tone as they'll ban out the Montang. Interesting. <laughs> not I... not not expecting that one. <laughs> I, that was LVC that banned didn't. Didn't they play the Montang? Yes, yes, they were the ones playing the Montang. I, Interesting. I'm just going to assume that there's some VOD review that I have not done that Lebanon is, is privy to. I think the Doe could be banned a little bit more standard and not surprising at all. UND Green knows this is a small map. If we're getting our roamers chopped off like early on, it's going to be a big struggle. And it's coming in as a First defensive ban, it's Cade. Not a big surprise there. Yeah, I know you still have Thatcher on the board. You're going to have those pocket EMPs, but you don't want to have to deal with the electric claws and just their elusiveness to, to destroying them. So I don't have any sort of surprise there. I'm interested to see if we're going to have a fuse now taken uh, since the bandit and the mute are the only things to contend with. Uh, I've come to be a big fan of fuse on the second floor, and Azami for the second consecutive time will be banned out. All because of the depth that she's able to bring to each and every single site that she's present on. Just adding that extra different layer. The same way when Mira was the, was the go-to ban. And it's been good because I, I think Mira's really had the chance to slip right back into the, the narrative and right back into play as we're seeing Davies taking them. Mira on Jim Bedroom, I mean, it's about as default as it gets, right? You're going to put one of them on the bathroom wall looking towards that breach, right? Like you mentioned, providing a bit of another Attack layer of defense, especially defense in that core position can. on the site, right in the middle, like a an egg sitting in a nest, right? It's going to be a lot safer there. And being able to play the mirror in that position as well is going to make that a lot more powerful. I do like the frost pick as well. I mean, personal favorite, let's just be real, right? Despite the change, I think she's a completely valid pick, especially here, because you get those long angles that you can see all the way across this south edge of the map, all the way from cash room all the way to gym. And so you have your frost mats on there. You could shoot them from anywhere. They're not going to get out of the frost mat. 10 seconds left. Yeah, I think that the big thing about a frost is placing any Five one of those welcome eight. mats in areas you don't have the option to look down. You you almost never clear a room with enough ability. Plexi is placing one of the top of Ritz I can understand it as it, it acts as like more of a proximity that you have to shoot and notify as the defenders, but I wouldn't call that like putting one inside of um, office, for example, where you're not, you're not going to necessarily be able to look down to shoot it out. That's a perfect one. Going into um, bathroom, you can never look down. You have to keep your gun up and ready. So it, it's that split second sort of reaction that we're looking for. But one thing I really want to highlight from LVC is you have an extension around the eastward side of the map with cash and a little bit down towards the first floor in that regard but nothing more than that this feels very different like a, a different type of uh, lvc that we did not get to see on bank brick always the aggressive player already in the middle of bar on buck i'm not expecting these mirrors to last very long especially with the switch going through already basically preparing that mirror to just or rather the jacuzzi walls to just be completely removed and with twitch going in as well i guarantee this mirror doesn't last very long Give it a couple seconds here. He missed. Never mind. I, I mean, it's still up. <laughs> that, that's kind wow. of a brutal place to that, miss. That's a but... blunder. Yeah. Yeah. I believe yeah, in chess, we, uh, we notate that with a question mark. But he is still doing a lot of work with the Twist Drones. Let's, you know, let's be real here. All of the Mute Jammers now off the board. Twist Drone still exists. It's a second shot here. And its body is in the way. Oh. He is, oh, he is body blocking oh, it. This is this is an intense fight. Because I mean, just getting this mirror could decide the round. But instead, it's going to be Plexios on the aggressive play. Dropped down into billiards and finds two. Escapes with his life. Wow. Absolutely brutal that that goes unpunished. Although I think he will be caught out momentarily. Playing playing back in downstairs still. Not exactly back back to the interesting play. matchup here. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Frost is going to be downed outside. By Reliable, who's uh, going to have the chance to go and swing back to it. And we'll see if Cole, now oh. Warren, getting off of their drone frosted, dropping it down to the front porch, is going to be available for a potential revive. But 
Renegade's gonna have to rotate right in front of them. And it does not look like Cole managed to get that mirror and... Well, that will be the first confrontation that will come to an end. We'll see if any others, as all five players of LVC are still up and ready. This has not been the start that UND Green was hoping for in this matchup. And it's going to cause for a lot of commotion. It's 26 seconds to go. Making their way up. Frosted is available. And finally, refragged. Plexios goes down, relegated to the bench for the remaining 15 seconds of this round. Spraying. The mirror was open, but that Mossberg shotgun still as potent as ever. Cole now coming in person. No body block in that one. As 3v1, Cole has to find three more. Not too many options. In through the smoke, able to find one more. Pistol out. Magnum spraying for the second, not able to find it, and the defenders of Lebanon Valley will take the first round in a very dominant fashion, all off the drop of Plexios and Debar. Yeah, I mean, that's just the key play. Plexios and Debar finds two. What is UND watching that they allow that to happen, right? And this is where, this is the one catch-up that I think did concern me a little bit with the way that UND plays and being on Clubhouse. It is... Clubhouse is so linear that you just have to get aggressive. You don't have another option. And UND spends a lot of time sitting around on their drones, getting information, trying to give themselves an advantage. Or Lebanon Valley, if they catch that out, if they're able to say, oh, there's two people on drones right here, they're just going to take advantage of it. You know, Plexios is going to do it. Imperium as well, likely going to do Or Emporium, sorry, likely as well, you know, going to be able to do that. And then on top of that, just to have the solid players in the backup, right? You had, obviously, the Senate in bathroom able to lock that down, even well in past the point that the Senate should have been able to stay there. I mean, he just stayed there, and at some point, you got to be able to expect that. UND Green, not enough information for the amount of time that they spent on drones. Lost two bodies for it. They're going to have to find a slightly different balance here if they want to be able to counter the aggression from Lebanon Valley. I'm interested. I'm glad that we see so or, or have the opportunity to go and see Plexios on the Souls. Is that that's going to be a very important operator, and especially in hunting down the drone. We saw the Twitch drone of Cole previously, so I think that's going to be a great counter for it. But Cole went nearly undetected. And I, I think that the the two kills they're able to collect on Twitch could they have been better utilized if the gun was up holding an angle. Potentially, but there's a lot of mistakes that should not have happened there from from UND Green, and I think that they will have more than ample opportunity to go and correct them. As switching maps can always be a, a tricky, different situation. Emporium roaming on the Mira down inside of first floor. That's a that this is one that I haven't seen and, before, and I, uh, believe I think spotted out as well. Uh, they know where they are. It's going to be yeah. a little bit more difficult for Brick to find this pick, but yeah. ultimately it's going to be picked up easy enough. Attackers have located a bomb. I, I think they're possibly playing for the Nitro into Garage, but you got to be very careful of uh, which operator you're taking if you're going to be attempting that, as Reliable's going to be droned out here on the second floor and go and have they're to opt you. Oh! Oh, I love it. The breach mirror. So oh in case you gosh. missed this, if we turn towards the wall, the reason why you have the mirror right in the center of it is because you can go and pop an impact and it's going to almost completely deny ace. Uh, there's no Haban on the board, so the thermite would also easily be taken care of. So now with no Selma breaches, no secondary breaches, all the players of UND Green are now going to have to flood to their either risers, which they've already done. They've eliminated Reliable and it's already starting to backfire, but just my absolute excitement again to see this is still here. Spray Flex, you simple find one, almost able to connect onto Renegade. As Frost is also down and out of this fight. Plexios, one of the most enjoyable players to watch, just of their sheer ability to rotate around the map and just play around, is going to utilize this great ability. To an aggressive position. Yes. Uh, I want to highlight for something. Go ahead. Giving them a shot. I mean, it, 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 currently, he hasn't. He hasn't got anything, you know, he's waiting for his teammates, and this, this is where I think the poly of UND Green is. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's what, a few options where, here where, where yeah. I, I think Brick doesn't have the opportunity to push up. They have to wait until you have someone like Renegade, bottom stairs, take out Plexios, and now you have the opportunity. You have Cole who's pushed up. Once you have that assist, you don't want to be pushing it all on your own, and that's why you're going to see that delay. You have the C4 waiting, Cole able to bait it out successfully. 35 seconds ago, all these different preemptive strikes were now utilized. A player out on the ledge waiting for it. Spray from Davies, not expecting Ace out on the ledge, and now a 1v2 the senate having to rotate back up from 
Red Stairs, knowing that the Ace is out on the ledge, that has been properly called out. Whether or not they know all the opportunities available, going in the upside down repel should be able to properly allow them to hold the case. Meanwhile, Cole's rotated uh, right along the reinforcement. That's going to result in a round going the way of the attackers of UND Green as they even it out one to one in very much of a reclaiming of the dominant status in the round. I am going to be straightforward and I'm going to say I think the Breach Mirror is a really troll. Um, simply for the fact that when you have the Breach open like that, doesn't matter if it's only a little bit and they're not actually going to be able to walk through. You've severely weakened your Raptors player. And yeah, your Raptors player is going to be able to get... I mean, I think they got literally all of the utility off that wall using their impacts. And then they died. And if your Raptors player is dead, and it doesn't matter whether or not the breach can be walked through because they could just go up the breach, oh, up Raptors instead, right? And and that's exactly what we saw. They just adapted. They said, okay, I mean, I guess we don't really need to go that way. We just go this way instead. They took their time, run things out, got the information. Well, I mean, like, they're good at that. A little bit concerned about how they take their time doing that. But if it's working out, it's working out. If LVC can't aggress at the right time, then it's not going to... Or, even even if LVC can't learn to sit on their hands, I don't think that necessarily Flexios needed to die. If Flexios stays alive, is able to swing that breach with another player. You know, we're looking at a different round. But UND Green was able to instead adapt and put their players in the proper position to be able to actually get that plant down, remain objective focused. And once they clear out the rafters, it's free. You just get on and you have a player on the breach. It's it's basically the easiest plan of your life. I will say that me personally, I, I was a, a very huge fan of uh, LVC's initial plan with, uh, I know you might call oh, the, I think, the it, I think it's a big plan. I, I think it's huge. I love it. You know, I think I, I think there's no denying things, that it worked. But... There's no denying that it worked in that scenario and that they did have ample opportunity and it came to the frags that happened after that. So I, I think in that regard, calling it more of a meme strat um, doesn't really apply to the, the circumstances in which it was utilized. But Plexios back on the roam with Souls. I think that this really this is a set that's going to be very comfortable as it gives off a lot of those bank vibes that you're looking for where you have the ability to extend and rotate back as soon as you need. Uh, Renegade taking the IQ is going to be very pivotal as they're able to go and spot out which players, the Echo, the Valkyrie, exactly what you want to see and great adaptation from UND Green. Double vertical play by the Buck playing all the way up in Lodgy and still getting angles onto site. Orium looks like he wants to challenge it, which would be very bold. I don't think he's going to. He's just going to place a Nitra there for when they do eventually decide, hey, we're going to actually need to get this hatch open. A few different opportunities here. If you're on the shoes of UND Green and we go and take a look at this round from their own perspective, they have the opportunity. They want to clear from blue. You want to have a lot of pressure. But the problem is you have yet to turn up Flexios. And it's curious to know if the Souls is now aware that there's an IQ on the opposing team of Renegade and that could entirely spot them out and be able to send a Trax Stinger lock locking out Blue Emporium is going to have a successful C4 that is the Valkyrie downing Renegade and that's that's a complete reversal of roles so surprising to see it's nade from Frosted not going to collect any sort of damage towards LVC and this seems more of a calm before the storm normally when you don't see this much action you'd call it a stall out but no I want to highlight UND Green is all moving themselves into a better position getting ready and making sure they all have a clear cut picture if you ever freeze and say what are you doing and why I guarantee they would be able to tell you spraying the Senate collecting onto brick as they go in on their own slot just a little bit behind is now inside of Moto looking towards sight Cole able to take a reliable spray. Cole with a second one before they are downed. Flexios will trade them out three to two. You're gonna have the Yoka drones. You have to contend with a spray on sight. Davies has Frost in their sight, and it's gonna be a spray from the Senate. That's a great play from LBC, just knowing how to play around every single hole in their set in, in, in their entire site. I, I want to say. Legion. 
killed three people from the same position, and none of them were looking at him. That's all I'm going to speak to on that. But on the other hand, they did do a very fantastic job. I do want to highlight that. Like you mentioned, they did a very good job of knowing what they wanted to do, what they wanted to get done, where they wanted to get map control, and that execute nearly flawless. Just a little bit of a lapse there on the Legion playing in the dry bar position there in church, right? Attackers but need to locate and defuse other than that, that execute was nearly perfect. They had, uh, I believe they had an advantage. They gave themselves an advantage there. And with that advantage, they 100% had the right to take that round. All it would have taken was just one more kill. And LVC set it up perfectly. They did wonderfully. Or sorry, UND Green. They did wonderfully. Wow, I've been talking about LVC this whole time. And I meant UND Green. UND Green did a wonderful job figuring out exactly what they wanted to do, building that execute. Right? The attackers... Orange team, the people who pick the map, you and DJ. <laughs> I, I think there's always a, a big change, especially from, from map to map. And uh, yeah. I, I think that change mentality can uh, change the entire way a team looks. So for El Lebanon Valley to now have the advantage in round count. Two to one against UND Green. I'm, I'm curious to see what exactly they can cook up here. I, I, my biggest concern is we have a repeat of the second floor. Last time we saw the drop of Plexios that was able to capitalize onto a whole bunch of players from UND Green. So I want to see the change. I want to see a lot more adaptation in maneuvering around the defense because nothing's changed from Lebanon Valley. So that could be Cole going and eliminating this mirror early on, or it could be the entire confrontation switching in that sense. So I, I'm curious. And I'm optimistic that we can see an even closer round rather than Cole having to jump in last second. And there it is. Thank you to our observer, unnamed, for being able to capture that momentous moment as Cole doing the thing a Twitch drone will do best. And that's getting right on into sight and popping Amira. With uh, two minutes to go, this has been a lot more of an even-footed round as Reliable finally breaks the tension. Down goes Bricka, and on that gridlock, that's a very pivotal role that's been doing a great job of closing out a lot of the opportunities of Lebanon Valley to rotate. Plexios is doing Plexios things. We see him all the way in the basement, walking up the main stairs, and he's prepared for this engagement. That's inevitable here between Frosted and Plexios. But I think Plexios gets cut out because he decides to take off running. And that's going to make sure that he lives another day, and Lebanon Valley maintains their man advantage. And that is only a man advantage. I would say UND Green really has a lot of control here. They've already got the mirror open. They've got the breach open. They've got a lot of time to, to sit here and set up. But now, this time, they're not going to be falling victim to this player, the mute, inside of Bathroom. They know that he's there. They're not going to be walking past him and making the same mistake they did last time. Now, that just means they just have to sit back, set up, and prepare for their execute, which is something that they know how to do. They know how to make these calls. Now it's just actually getting it done. Plexios inside CC should have a good opportunity here. Swing it on the window if no one's expecting it. They are, but it doesn't matter. Plexios has a kill onto Frosted. Meanwhile, it's an absolute sea of blue as the Senate and Davis collect under their respective players. Reconciliation frag for Slop, but they're led up to a severe amount of HP, staring down the remaining four barrels of the defenders. Able to down Emporium with that spray. Make that three. Can they ice the all 1v1s, or is it going to have to be an absolutely sensational play? Emporium, revive back up. It's going to have to be a jump into this bathroom. We talked about angles where you can't look down for the frost mat, because the moment you look down, you're going to get sprayed, and there's Reliable to capture LVC yet another round as they go up 3-1. to one. I mean, technically speaking there, he does have the option to just look to the side because he can pick himself up. I mean, he's not going to be able to do it in time, but he could do it, right? Uh, but in any case, there's a round that LVC just showing. They've got the gun skill, right? And, and I mean, tell, tell me if you disagree. I think LVC, yes, they've been adaptable. And, and yes, they've been able to talk, call audibles, etc., and be unpredictable. But I think the thing that sets these two teams apart the most 
isn't either of those things where LVC is this super adaptable team Attackers that's unpredictable and, and UND is a team can. that's able to call their executes, right? I think the things so far that set them apart the most and given Lebanon Valley the advantage both on bank and here, they've got some players that just shoot really, really good. <laughs> They're really good at shooting. Ugh. But I digress. We're here on the next round and they're going to be playing the front mirror again. You've heard my take on this. I, I don't need to go over it again. But I, at the same time, I do think it is a valid play, especially if they're going to be able to maintain control of Raptors. I think they just might need to dedicate a little bit more hold onto Garage. Remember, this is the only site that they lost. It, it's technically, I believe, the worst site on the map. But if they get a player able to play in lower garage, make sure they're not pushing in on them or even just playing swamp, we could be looking at a really solid Lebanon Valley round over UND Green. We'll see <laughs> if they're able learned. to solidify <laughs> their control over the wall. And Emporium playing downstairs was drawn out very early on. And I need to see that this entire pressure that they have is at least able to hold until the minute 30 mark. Otherwise, I can't justify that extension as it's just too easy and not enough utility is going to be allocated uh by you and green to justify keeping your mirror there so that's just something to look for in the future in a setup where you can go and check your body and see if there's ever a better way to be setting up and perhaps the mirror down below could work in a very dominant fashion but they're a heavy three armor they're gonna make a lot of noise as they rotate back to site that's also most likely in that position to be able to go up and play the c4 denial as well as the senate having that ability so interesting to see renegade Using one of those summer breaching charges from up above, spray from cold, not able to find the player of Emporium who's sitting. And that's gonna actually be Emporium collecting on the kill. Meanwhile, Plexios onto Brick, but inside a supply, the ace of Renegade will brew frag onto Emporium, giving us a four to three. Can they get collect onto a second one in Plexios? The double refragging machine will not be the case for Renegade as they are all out of summer breaching charges. Another confrontation going down up by bedroom as well as construction. That's really important to note as there's entire elements of this site that are not even taking place. And you do see that now in this round, the impact towards the wall did not work successfully and you will have to go in the repel to jump in through that but it doesn't change that you have a very dominant hole that you're able to use renegade out from that same mirror window will catch the senate lacking and now open things up to being a 3v3 great round from the ace so far as they've done a great job of shutting down their opponents at every turn sloth sitting inside of construction looking towards bedroom really aiming to deal with plexios best they can jumping out what a oh, shot wow. from plexios meanwhile a triple kill from renegade is they're up to take out reliable and it's going to be an a fight of the absolute juggernauts the souls of plexios going against the ace of renegade plexios able to collect us i believe that's the third kill onto sloth Having a very dominant performance, spraying in. And that's a quad kill from Renegade. Coming down to the two top frags on each opposing roster. Plexios having all of the health required for this engagement. Only taking a single shot. And Renegade all lit up to a single sliver. As LVC will take that one and complete a perfect sweep of sights. Going up 4-1 to one as we have the final round in the half. Lebanon Valley looks really dominant right now and yes that last round was a lot closer much thanks to the escapades of renegade absolutely dominating putting himself in positions where he is not expected despite playing on the on the breach but he's able to collect the kills nonetheless i think once again we need to talk about plexios though this man just absolutely obliterating the entire opposition he, there it's like Attackers plexios versus you know und green is almost nuclear bomb versus coughing baby levels right and remember in the last game he had 17 he went 17 and 7 now he's 10 and 3 this man is absolutely just melting through und green and certainly so far they just don't have a response to it renegade very close but I will say a lot of Renegade's ability to find a lot of those picks, the opening picks, the trades, etc. that he did find, came from his ability to play in an unpredictable way off of information that his teammates had gathered for him. Right? And that's no different from Plexios. But 
UND Green is losing their teammates faster than Lebanon Valley is. And part of that's by nature of the fact that they're an attacking team. Uh oh. But at the end, of the oh no! Oh. My heart skipped a beat there. Oh. I can't. Even, I can't lie to you, Yali. I, I, no. I, I'm too. seeing wow. Flexios. Uh, do plexios things if you as, as you said and that that definitely would have been one of them thankfully for und green where we're still gonna have an even five on five in plexios giving away their location and operator to the entirety of the und green roster initial stages of the round und green has no responsibility other than making sure they don't get run out on and droning in a little bit I don't really want to get their drones hot here, but it's not that big of a deal if they are, because at this point, they just want information. They're trying to decide oh, how to take man. this. But there you go. You're losing your primary heart breach. Renegade, first player off the board, the player who almost saved the last round. Doesn't look fantastic for you and D just off that single pick alone. It's been very interesting to watch Plexios engage and disengage throughout the entirety entire map of clubhouses. It's adapted through these these multiple rounds, finally taking a significant amount of damage here inside of Stockroom. And this is probably where they might meet their demise and make their final stand. But with a minute 34 and 5 to go in the round, that's exactly what you want to see. And it's going to get caught on the rotate back as there, there really wasn't many other options. But you've delayed time enough that you're going to force UND Green to go and have to take certain elements of, of the map, elements of the basement that they might not fully understand. Last time we saw that a lot of the players here were not properly droned out. But a spray from up above from Frosted, great job on the gridlock, will eliminate Emporium. They're going to be relegated to watching the Valkyrie cameras for the remaining elements of this round. Minute to go. Pressure mounting for Lebanon Valley is they have a lot more pressure on them than expected. Cole with great information on reliable. It's going to be all left up to Davis and the Senate. Seeing the Maverick jumping in, they're going to have to jump off as the Maverick knows their exact location ping from the IQ. And this is the accumulation of UND Green's repetition on the same sites, understanding the way LVC intends to play them. And they're starting to shape up exactly like a typical split here on Clubhouse. Brick taking a tiny bit of damage, but is going to wait for the rest of their team to arrive to make a proper assault onto the Senate. Plan being attempted by Cole, assisted from up above, should be successful. The Senate has the rotate option, is going to have to contend with their own mirror, and Brick, the Maverick that made the entrance into sight, will allow for UND Green to go into the half 4-2 to two with hope in the second half. Honestly, excellent execute by UND Green. I mean, what would, what would I be saying if it wasn't an excellent execute by UND Green, right? It always is. They know what they're doing. No one's shutting them down. I don't care if you've got the echo cam, if you have the information. UND Green knows when they can exploit the holes in Lebanon Valley's defenses. And they just do it. They don't hesitate. There's no, I don't know if we should be doing this. It's they gather the information. They understand what they need to do and they just do it. Lebanon Valley, sometimes they shoot back, but sometimes... Sometimes Plexios goes one for one. And you know, that kind of hurts a little bit. Lebanon Valley is going to be switching over to our attacking sites. We're going to have to see how they actually do on that side. UND Green might just pull out the most successful, amazing defensive half that we've ever seen. Just absolutely locking things down. I mean, given their performance on Bank, what do you think they're actually going to be looking like on uh, on Clubhouse? What do you think, Banks? Well, we can go and look towards their gym bedroom setup, and I, I think we might have a, a little bit of a light extension. Uh, gym bedroom, you see a lot of emphasis on cash, and I could see the warden either playing inside of office or towards that cash area for that extension and just playing for a close angle, trying to shut down where possible. Do I think that's 100% going to happen? No, and I think that the castle could also take up that mantle. I, I'm really unsure about how much emphasis UND Green wants to put onto that roam as they have a few different options on who they could leave for it. But I I, I have a few curiosities to the lack of a Mira pick and, and how that's going to shape up. I know Mira is not essential to, to this site, but with the way that you have LBC looking to pressure and take a lot of commotion and create chaos, 
the mirror allows you to have a clear cut way to see through it. So you're going to be relying a lot more on brick on the warden to be able to constantly see through the mess that is LVC's attack. I mean, they could be bringing all kinds of smokes and flashes, right? I would not be surprised to see LVC bringing exactly what they need to deny a lot of lines of sight. LVC was a team that we saw thrive off of adaptation, but a lot of that comes from gathering some information, seeing if they can force Attackers a hole. If they can't force a hole, they'll adapt, bombs if they can. right? And on Clubhouse, there's too many long sight lines, and it's so linear that unless you are cutting those off somehow via, for example, smokes, you're not going to be able to force a hole in the way that you can on Bank. I think that potentially we could see a lot of smoke play coming out here. LVC potentially are Bomb could be prone to that, attackers. but as well, I want to point out, I just think that the gridlock, I mean, she's got nades, you know, they're going to be playing below. I think more than what I've mentioned thus far, it's going to be something consistent, right? Lots of play all over the map, Five trying to find left. a pick, force the hole, take. I'm curious, which one of us will... I think we, we both have a lot of elements that, that could be viewed as correct in, in this uh, initial defensive setup from UND Green, but uh, I'm very interested to see how you, LVC go was in tailors their attack to this sort of approach the, we can't shy away from mentioning the three attack or three hard breach approach which generally will will show a lot of life in being able to open up as many walls as required using the maverick to take care of the holes uh that's exactly what we see from emporium as renegades stuck on a camera you might be able to see uh, their feet uh, you gotta look for their feet come on you're uh, missing out on a golden opportunity here absolutely unfortunate as the bandit will have more than enough ample opportunity to rotate off the wall, understanding and just waiting. They're gonna have to go for the C4. If this is prepped properly, it's gonna be zapped by their own wall. That's that's oh, excruciating. Oh, a shot out. Thank you. I forgot that electricity no longer affects defensive gadgets. So great coverage from the Maverick and definitely setting up right in oh, no. to cash is gonna be Brick. Brick has a couple options here, but not expecting the aggressive push to be one of them. They'll be downed in the process as the initial push from LVC. He expect the aggressive push. He's got the support that he needs to be able to play there. He has and, the and support. He's still down. He right. has the support, but it's a matter of how long can you sustain that. And you know that he's going to go down being a human drone. Sometimes you just want to have someone on cameras. Down goes Brick. The repel from the center is going to do a little bit of chip damage to Cole, rotating right back into sight. And we have a little bit of a interesting confrontation. Plexios is going to be the first player to go and initiate contact right inside of construction. This is one of the pivotal points because you have multiple angles you have to be aware of. Once you clear office, it makes it a lot easier. And that's exactly what they're going to opt to do. Davies clearing this out. That means you only have to worry about the single breach inside of office as well as the single doorway. If you're able to play around that, you have to play with your players, secure case. This entire one-sided push that started off over towards the west can continue from the east. Interesting sound manipulation. You want to use as many holes in the wall. You want to use every single ability, every single bit of information you can grab. Now, we may have the outlines, but the players on the other side do not as shots ring out all the way from Jim. And the crossfire will be the end of LVC. Pushing in. Plexios will even the odds. Davies still down. Renegade spraying from inside. A triple kill for Plexios oh as they spring the trap. Frosted sitting inside a gym. Do they have the information required? Spraying right onto the head. It's going to be Plexios to win that one out. Down goes Frosted. LVC clutching it out of the grasp of UND Green. He what a rout. He's just too good. I mean, what else is there to say there? Right, he is going in and he's cleaning up Lebanon Valley. They it's kind of a sloppy execute, but they're finding the trades. They got it down to their 1v1. And guess who was the last person in line? It was Flexios. He just went through, swept them all out. Wow. I mean, it's simply just phenomenal it's play by Flexios. It's the vision there. It's like, the vision. Yes. You you need to understand that when when you're going that's Plexius being able to put their mind, whether they realize it or not, into their opponents and understand where they would be holding from and what they're exactly 
expecting the perfect amount of time to delay and wait you've played your utility on the other side of the map it's that ability to use the fact that you have feet and you can rotate that that clears up so much of the pressure and yes both of their teammates might have gone down early on but it, it's it, it's plexios's sheer ability to rotate and play and understand the the final kill onto the castle and and frosted did a great job that round i i think it it really made a difference of the movement to not slowly peak to peak and keep moving that that and, and that that's where the ump really struggles where you know you're gonna have to deal with a, a gun that has a slower fire rate so great job plexios i i don't like that we constantly are are, are bringing them up but it's actually playing the amaru who, who has the playing ability. amaru He's, that's, he's that's, 15 that's, and 4, and he's playing Amaru. What do you think the odds are he just goes straight through a window? No, he, he's going up to the roof. Um, I got either, a it, it could be to play a rotation game to spring the trap and a scare tactic, or even to rotate back up to the roof after being inside of office if they want to go and try to clear that. Uh, but these are such niche examples that I'm uh, left with a few more questions than I am answered currently. What if he goes up through a hatch um i, I like, no i do agree i hate that this is like this, this is becoming the what is plexios gonna do who kind of game but like honestly what what is what is he gonna do right lvc ha has something up their sleeve obviously i mean they, they're gonna manage to get this wall open it might just take them a little bit longer but they're gonna get it open and there yeah. is there there's no question here we we're, we're this entire push that you're seeing they, it's hard to go and shoot a nitro cell towards that. You're waiting for the right amount of time. My my biggest problem now now comes within if you're gonna split your your resources, if you're gonna have Plexios go and do their own thing, you have to understand that LVC is going to go and have a split push from cash, and that's what you're taking away from. You have a single player that is gonna try to pull the attention of the entirety of LVC that's focusing on this eastern side of the map. There's a whole bunch of different elements, and I think LVC's stalled out a bit. You and Green have done a great job with your utility usage, although it's the same operators that we saw previously. They've held. Plexios, spring the trap inside of Office with two as the entirety of LVC waiting for the right time. Push and make their way in. Brick and Cole, the remaining two players, are on the side of Cash. Plexios will get a 3k. Down goes Cole, all with the SMG 11. Now Brick. Looking, able to find Plexios, down they go. Their fifth death on the match, giving them a crazy three points. Well, it looks like 3.25 even KD, that is off. But Brick, spring in, gonna have to find one. Down goes the Senate. Oh, wow. This is now a lot more obtainable. Triple kill for Brick. Has to isolate the 1v1 here. How can they do that? How can they swing around? You have to deal with a player inside the bathroom, player inside of office. They're able to find the one. Quad oh. kill for Brick. Straight towards oh. bathroom, no Emporium to shut them down. The absolute insanity that is unfolding in front of our eyes is UND Green having highlight real plays or just getting shut down at the final moment. These are excruciating, heartbreaking losses as Lebanon Valley will go up 6-2. This is unexpected for the Green roster. And I'm left with just sorrow as it's just so close, so much within their grasp, but just not able to capture it in the final moments. A, you remember at the beginning of this map, and I said, oh, I think this is going to support you and D Green's play style. I, was think, I think I was thinking a little bit too much about you and D Green's play style. I think it does support their play style. Like you mentioned, they did excellent with their utility play. Need to locate and but they just weren't expecting the second that got open, Plexio sent himself through the hatch and got a 2k and opened up the floodgates for the rest of the team to push through. Meanwhile, they still had players, UND Green being, they still had players on the other side of the map in cash, in, you know, in server. They still had players over there. And so did Lebanon, right? Lebanon's keeping the pressure over there so that they don't see that coming. Just the ability to manipulate what UND thinks is going on. Just brilliant. Lebanon, or, sorry, UND ago. had absolutely no clue that was going to happen, and Lebanon engineered it that way. Brilliant play, excellent calling. I mean, just bravo. 
I, I, I'm curious. I'm really curious. I want to see Unity Green compete the way I know that they can, but it just seems like this is completely different. This is the greatest win margin that we've seen from these two teams this this season. The, the greatest one being 7-4 to four victory uh, for both sides. And, I, and I, I do just want to confirm this, that it was UND Green that initially won uh, with, with both these teams. Yeah, UND Green was able to beat Lebanon Valley in a best of three, two to one. Um, oh, no, I am losing my mind. It was it was Lebanon Valley. I, I did read the stat sheet wrong and continue to do so as they, they were able to win two to one. So interesting to see LVC completely adapt as the Senate will capture the opening frag onto Sloth. Uh, I think that we do need to highlight Renegade, Brick, and Cole from the side of UND Green as they've done a great job of being able to have their breakout plays, but just not able to to finishing it off. And, and hopefully that sort of utility usage or that mentality can go and propel this team to a higher status in, in the future or, or in the next map. That way they can jump back from this. As 5-3, to three, we're going to have to see a really big jump out and expressive play from these remaining three players. This is such a North American play style from LVC. You see it in T1 in, not the NACL, but you know, E2, where, hey, we're going to drone them out. Okay, let's get aggressive on this player. And you absolutely, positively have to have players playing behind those players. It's like, look at this. Renegade completely left out in the dark. He doesn't have anyone else from UND coming to actually help him out. This looks to me like a team that says, oh, we're 6 2. We're going to go on autopilot they left renegade out right he's dead they've got every single player on lebanon valley getting aggressive against und and it is brutal lebanon playing a brilliant game against this and und green just struggling to come up with any sort of an answer i think we got to see this final moment cole needs to try to capture two here one to deny a flawless round and two just to deny these players ample opportunity but needs to wait for them to make the first move before they spring the trap. That is going to be the most pivotal part. They haven't drawn them out, and this is the problem with autopilot. If you go and try to rush in now, you could be paying dividends for those actions. Nade cooked out Plexios. If they were to just turn behind them, Cole still undetected. Did they hear the drop? Yes, they did. Trying to find two, but it's going to be the crossfire resulting in a flawless round for Lebanon Valley as they win their second map and their opponent's map pick at that. Just not quite finding those kills. And it, but uh, no, I do, I do tend to agree. I think one thing that will be interesting to see is if LVC decides to bring an Echo. I know they did that a handful of times against UND Green, uh, especially on Bank, just simply for the fact that UND Green does take a long time to execute. I think Lebanon Valley, if they bring that Echo and start putting up a good amount of resistance Twitch. just in terms of time rather than man, th that could be something that we see that gets interesting because it's always fun to see the Echo, you know, the, the classic Echo counter defuse on, um, you know, on the bottom floor site kitchen uh, yeah twitch off the drone twitch off the board is expected in the mont play. Oh. odd also a play very odd i don't even are we gonna lose the warden off the board next is that not what we're I, okay i will i will speak to the twitch a little bit i have a feeling that uh und green wants to play mira if Lebanon doesn't ban her here, which they banned the Azami as it predicted. Yeah, um, Azami, that's no surprise. Now, I, the question is, you, do you ban Twitch and Mira? No, you don't really do that. We can see a Valkyrie off the board. Uh, we can see a Kaid off the board. I, I'm looking more information, but I see the Mira slipping through. So that's the, the sort of mentality that UND is giving off. I agree with that. There's souls. Yeah, oh, that's more go. information. Now, we, we, were, we were mostly right in the, in the yeah. defensive side, is, but the defense has yeah. been very, very <laughs> predictable. The attacker side was a little wild, but I think it makes sense. Uh, you did mention Monty. Um, I didn't think it was going to happen, but you know, now both teams have banned Monty. Uh, no, it was kind of no. It's been LVC both times. Was it LVC? Yeah, it was LVC both times. You're right. Despite LVC playing it on bank. Yeah, so they played it on bank and have been banning it ever since. So, like you said, maybe they know something that we don't, but yeah, very. Questionable. We have reliable starting off in the Amaru and 
Plexios on the sledge. A lot of I like that LVC has been changing their their rules a lot, and I, I know I don't like to speculate on attacker lineup too early on. Uh, so we, we can look at what can't be changed, and that is going to be the defense. And you, you talked about the Mira setup, and I, I'm going to pick your brain again quickly as uh, what type of Mira setup we could be receiving and having to, well, to see on uh, on this on the site. Normally, what you see is you see the Mira. Yeah, it is over there. Um, it, it's by stacks up looking into freezer because you can open up the whole wall and see all the piano. Uh, only problem is there's two problems. Ooh, uh, LVC are going for a pay setting play, and the other one is that Mira is on the wrong side. No, uh, no, you, you can, can shoot, shoot that, that from the from window. The yeah. window. And on top of that, look at the lineup that LVC is bringing. That is a cocktail take lineup. That is a fast cocktail take lineup. There is no chance that this hold holds a candle to what LVC is about to do, just by nature of LVC as the exact counter to what UND Green has set up though so far. They do have the Wamai, which is a good choice when dealing with a Capitao, as that's one of the people that can grab it. But Reliable spring in the trap. They're going to go right on into fire hall, Fireplace Hall. Meanwhile, the Senate is going to take a slight bit of damage. Meanwhile, Reliable may... Have they been droned out? Have they, Has the audio cue been there? Is the Legion of Sloth just waits patiently, trying to get as many goo mines down as possible, droned out. Not necessarily checking their back. You mentioned that this is definitely going to be an, a cocktail-sided push from the eastern side, but it's been very slow, methodical waiting. Sloth just holding as much time as possible. Meanwhile, you have the mirror holding from the window. The second E1D scan will allow Plexios to slowly spring the trap. Moving on forward, looking for the head. Nope, they're going to get shut down by the Sloth. Meanwhile, the Senate is able to find Brick pushing up. Sloth doing a great job of holding thus far in the round. A spray from the Amaras. Two more players now have to clear out the Legion of Sloth from up from down below. Meanwhile, from up above, you're gonna have Renegade playing off of their mirror, playing for the vertical holes instead. This is a very curious situation as just turning at the wrong time will be Renegade being able to catch the Emaru, not being able to find the shots that they were originally looking for. Now we can see that they plan to use the castle barricade to block out, but that puts a lot more emphasis on the white stairs and allows for a lot more security up into Cocktail. Reliable has the opportunity to go and repel and grapple up through the hash. That will not be the scenario for now. C4 prepped out the window. Great throw by Renegade. Down goes Emporium. Down, down to a 3v3. One minute to remaining. Lebanon Valley is going to have to spring the trap sooner rather than layers. Reliable is going up on the repel. Possibly use that Gara hook to spring the trap into Cocktail. You talked about exactly this and the mentality as you have to get into sight as fast as possible. Cool. Dealing with exfoliating bolts. Having to spray from each side, but it's going to be Davies jumping in. Refrag by Renegade. Down goes Reliable. The Senate is also going to have to go and hold as much as they can. Frosted waiting for the impact. He's going to wait for Renegade to assist them. The Senate out on the repel. Can they hold? Are they going to get jumped out on? Do they have the claymore? So many questions without answers, but it won't matter. Davies with a 3k on the round. Frosted having to rotate all the way around to Cigar Shop. They have the long angle to contend with. They have the 1.5 amplified scope to make this just slightly easier. The player playing from down below will be Davies. Still has two bolts waiting and ready as the diffuser is already lit on fire right use the my puck you're gonna have to isolate as many frags as possible you didn't make a noise there you're gonna have to wait and with seven seconds to go there is absolutely no choice great shot to shut down davies and a second spray double kill for frost good for the stats but not enough time to get that one done and that's gonna be lbc Grab grabbing that one out of the hands i feel of und green but also very well right into the setup, as you said, a, a teeter-totter of sorts. What a wild setup. Like, bringing the castle to block the mirror there, I think, is kind of genius. Um, for the fact that, A, like, you get to block it there, and then on top of that, as you mentioned, there's a lot of emphasis on the white stairs. There is almost no way anyone is getting up white stairs, and no one did. But then it didn't matter, right? Even though you're able to play around that mirror on both sides because of the castle barricade on the freezer door, right? You're able to hold down that top white position. There is not a bomb. single crossfire looking into Cocktail. There is one player in Cocktail, and he has exactly zero support once they clear out that Legion. I'd like to mention that as well. That Legion down on the bottom floor. 
excellent play, excellent positioning. That's probably the support that they were looking for to hold Cocktail. Super easy to clear out, right? We saw the Amaru go in dining, and the Legion was just completely stuck there. Would have liked to see Plexios get a little bit more support on his swing, actually. Or not, sorry, not Plexios. It was, um, it was Plexios. I think it was Emporium on the Amaru. Right, Plexio needs to get support from the Amaru. Amaru needs to be swinging with him onto that Legion so that they don't have to try and trade it later. Good play by Emporium to shoot at that wall to make sure that ultimately Sloth is taken care of, disposed of, dispatched, and removed off of the board. But at the end of the day, what I'm seeing right now is... A, wow, nice shot. But at the end of the day, what I'm seeing right now very similar setup to what we had last time, and I think it's going to play out almost exactly the same way, like 2 8. What aggression on the skylight. Oh, yeah, sorry, you got that? Yet. We, we still have a. Having a little problems with the on and off switch of a microphone. It's very difficult uh -huh. to utilize. Yeah, crazy mm -hmm. stuff, eh? LVC, yeah, I, I really like the, the initial impact they've made in changing more of that cookie cutter format to go top down. The part that I'm curious about, and are we going to see okay, Reliable blows that up. Oh, damn! Down goes Emporium. Great shot by Brick. And that's once again the advantage going the way of U and D green early on, and you're going to have the Ying Candelas. Are we going to see a drop from Lebanon Valley? Yes, we are. Dropping right into the heat of sight. Davies is going to go for a plant behind Bar. Why would they go for this? Because you can still hold from up above, but is there any player that is still left up yeah, watching that? Plexio, still able to find one. You know what? You got the dose. Still playing on the dope, but second ring is going to go out with 40 seconds to go. You want to have a ring. You want to have as much chaos as possible. Cole to take out Davies. Plexios, Reliable. Do they have what it takes? Reliable is going to be the lonesome player waiting on roof. And you want to make sure that you have enough of an impact to try to prevent as much as possible. Plexios takes out Sloth. Now bringing this down to a 2v3. Cole pushing up. Plexios with a quad kill! Swinging around! Causing an absolute commotion. Can they get the ace? No, they can't. Renegade goes, looking for the case, doesn't know where to find it. It's all the way behind bar. You're running out of time if you're even going to tap it. It's all the way around. You make your location with five seconds to go. You don't even have the opportunity to grab it with the pistol out. Waiting, wishing. There's the breaching charge. You don't got to do them that dirty. LVC taking the second consecutive round off the back of Flexios. Having just the absolute dominating ability to swing around and play inside a cigar shop. I'm amazed. So I have not been more wrong in my life. Um, okay, listen. Uh, <laughs> but listen, what they did is UND Green, they adapted. They did a good job. They removed the lesion from that position. Uh, I think at that point, you can make an aggressive play into Cocktail, but it didn't work out. More aggressive plays coming out from UND Green were the, uh, an effective adaptation. Um, but then LVC showed us why they're LVC, right? We mentioned it over and over and over again in Bay. Their adaptations are just peak. They were able to look at the site and be like, there's like three players off site. Y just ying, ying all that, you know, jazz and just fucking go in, right? I I, I, I am very surprised that they made the, made the shot call and then completely sent it. There's so many ways for that to go wrong, and the Senate being able to hold properly just created an absolute chaos and the lack of information on the site as well for them to not know where Case was planted. Uh, I don't even know if Default was originally shot. It might have been shot early round, but they didn't really make uh, too much of an impact in. So uh, I'm left with more questions than answers from UND Green, and I'm curious as to how exactly this match will continue to line up. But if you are in the shoes of UND Green, you just lost the same site twice. You need to figure something out and you need to pick it up now because your back is against the wall. You don't want to dig yourself a grave this early on in the matchup. Yeah, going up two right away on cafe attack is dominant. Any way you slice it. Cafe has a tendency to be sided, not necessarily attacker or defender sided, but when you see it, it's a lot of times it will be either attacker sided or strongly defender sided. Oh, uh, I, uh... <laughs> Ouch! Oh, very close. 
Uh, you know what? They get away with the rifle. They get away with their life. That could make mm -hmm. a really big difference as the clear of the top floor comes well underway. And what we're seeing right now, Yali, is, is exactly that cookie-cutter clear where you start top and make your way down. Yeah, I mean, this is super simple. Brick taking a lot of damage for the early aggression. But at this point, he doesn't really need to keep it up. You know, he's going to make his way back down to the bottom floor because he doesn't need to be up there anymore. They've already wasted time, and Lebanon Valley is going to take a little bit more just to make sure that it's all clear. Once they do have control of that, though, oh. Oh. What do we have yeah, once they have control of that, that player is not going to survive for 30 seconds. Okay. Unless he moves, which he does. Um, but, but even then, it's they have so much vertical control. And there's going to be very little room in the site, especially with Ram and Buck on the board. There's going to be so much vert open up onto the site. It's going to be impossible to play in any of the deep corners that you need to deny any plants, right? To, to deny the ability to actually get in and plant. I'm curious as to how Unity Green is going to be able to respond to this, because a minute 15 of pure vertical pressure is very scary to contend with, and you see Cole running around it game becomes a game of cat and mouse except the mice down below are able to fight back with explosives not something you'd normally expect from this game you have renegade and cool who will be able to do the forefront of that damage brick who should probably not be on site due to their limited amount of hp it also has an impact but i don't see that being utilized in this sort of capacity 45 seconds to go good on the players of UND to rotate off as we're still at a five versus five formation the jackals slowly starting to make their way down that's reliable do they boycott this warden do they push right towards the site but that's over aggression from renegade trying to spray for two are they good for it no they're not but it's gonna be a spray from davies inside of freezer but here's frosted they have the information do they have the swing not necessarily they know they have the down that's frosted flexios the fragging machine looking for it. Skeleton key in hand. Down goes Frosted Emporium looking for the refrag, but Plexios is there and ready to collect. C4 in the hands of Cole. As well as the MP7. Prepping the C4. Sent flying over towards default. Able to rotate. No, that gets shot out instead. But with four seconds to go, they need to get the plant, but it doesn't even matter as Emporium is there. After shooting the C4 midair, waits for the head, sprays finds it in LVC, taking a third consecutive round in a dominant fashion, even when it's in the trade games. Thanks. Yes, Yali. What do you do if you're you and D Green right now? Like, oh, simple. You call a tactical I'm, timeout. You that's, figure out okay. That's a hundred percent true. <laughs> right. I don't know what, what else you want me to say there, but you call a tactical timeout because you, you you have a tech pause, which is very different. You're dealing mm -hmm. with a problem. You're not really addressing the problems that are going on in the game. What you got to do mm -hmm. here, it doesn't matter what you talk about. You can go and just have your own little podcast with the boys going on in your your little your your timeout and just having right. just like getting everything off problem. your chest. You should be laughing. You should be having fun. Yes, this is a very tense moment, but through everything that I've done through a lot of plays a, a hockey game that i was commentating the other day one of the big things that i wanted to note was even when the, one of the teams was losing early on it was smiles it was laughs they were having a good time and they were hyping each other up to be able to make amazing plays you need that confidence so for you and d green you have a quick timeout address some of the key problems do this do this and then have a joke break the tension you're playing a video game for pete's sake have some fun that, that's my response. That's my, I, my whole, I my totally whole dig it. No, I totally dig it. Uh, of course, a Canadian would be talking about hockey or whatever, but but, but beyond that, I, I totally agree. They need to change up the pace. I don't know what that means. They made an aggressive play and it paid off pretty well, but uh, like they had a strong advantage in the second round. They, they were up four to two. They just couldn't figure out where the plant was going down, you know? Little adjustment to be made there, but. At the end of the day, you just need to change up the pace. And honestly, I think they have. Look at this. This is an aggressive lineup. Just a few operators to slow down your opponents and other operators to get aggressive against them. It's it's pretty simple. They, they've ditched the castle idea. I think that is probably the play here. Uh, and it... Oh, it was Wamai, well, I guess. It was a Wamai, well, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I was like, did Ash just team. shoot the, the Rotero drone? No, no, no. Who was my? Oh, here we go. So we got Plexios. They have the.
goo mine that they've spotted out, and you know that when you knife the floor and break that, you're going to give a little bit of audio of a sloth rotating back into reading room. They're trying to play as much of a roam game as possible, and it, it, it gives me a little bit more questions than answers, and these goo mines are doing a great job of slowing things down just enough. I, I, the roam game is giving LVC more questions than answers, too. I mean, where did Legion go? They don't know yet. He shot so many of their their flank cams, their recess that they have to try and catch out these roamers. Now he's just in pillar. UND Green has full control over pillar, and while there is going to be some aggression into it, they've got a lesion downstairs and the warden playing up here by the chassis. There is no chance of them to really take strongly into Shiko. Do find out the firefight finally, and Brick is going to be the first one that goes down. But they've wasted lots of time in the meantime. Yeah, look at the key aggression points from LVC of not overextending and waiting for a player like Brick who's in a vulnerable position just overextend slightly. Renegade doing a great job to get a refrag onto Reliable. And look at that. Cole is coming up big. Down goes the Senate. Three to four. This is the hype. As soon as you have this man advantage, you want to keep cool, calm, collected while still hyping your team up as much as humanly possible. Plexios knows how to shut that down. Is able to find one. Downing slot. There's two for Plexios. Davies still trying to get in on the action as Cole's caught upstairs, but they are not going down without a fight. Plexios on a triple before getting refragged by Frosted. We're down to a 1v1. This round has the ability to turn the tide of the entire matchup. Emporium has the confidence, has the three rounds behind them, but Frosted has that anticipation, the unwavered, unfiltered energy. Can they swing around with it? The top frag of UND Green. Can they find any sort of round count for them? No, oh, it's gonna be a poor hit to shut down the dreams of UND Green. Heart stakingly so. As LVC goes up four to nil on their map pick of cafe. That is such a brutal Ouch. loss. That is a mental killer. You know they got their mentals back. They heard us from beyond the cast, and they said, yeah, you know what? We're going to play our game. We're going to dial in, and we're going to do our thing. And they did. And they did a good job. They were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lebanon Valley. Even once Plexios went off and got that 3K that evened it back out, the trade was still there by a very nice shot from the Malusi player leaving them in a 1v1. But at the end of the day, this is what I've talked about since at, I think, Attack halfway through Clubhouse. And bomb. LBC has got some nasty mechanical skills, some nasty game knowledge. And they are just, even though UND Green, talented team, excellent coordination, working together very well. Lebanon Valley, I think they're just shooting. <laughs> they're just shooting them. And when it comes down to a 1v1, when you've got two players who are mostly reliant on their gun skill, nine times out of 10, Lebanon Valley is gonna be the team that comes out on top. I'm, I'm very curious right now as to the... The, the, I, I, I'm always wondering Five what the comms are like, what, what is the mentality like, what's the environment? Because that's something that I... Uh, at least you're able to see at a land that when, when I'm doing football, I, I can go and see that these players are, are coming to the side and having these chats and I can see them hyping each other up. That, that That's something that I, I don't know for these teams and that element of unknown can either be a very positive thing or it can cause me to have a couple more doubts where UND Green's curtain set up only uses five of the ten reinforcements that you're available to use. You, you, you ban out someone like the Twitch and you're not taking... The, the Mira is you, you you feel that that's not going to assist you enough as there hasn't been a cocktail push. And that can be the right call, but it's just getting caught out in the wrong position. Plexios taking out Brick extremely early on, and that being the dock, uh, an operator you really don't want to lose because you, you have that chip damage that you're able to deal with. So it, once I, I feel that we are, are personally being left with more questions than answers here, Yali. You can't, you can't see my screen. I don't know why Brick is there. I appreciate that Brick is getting aggressive and trying to play his game. He was just not in the right position there. Um, 
moving yeah, on from yeah, that. I, I, get, I, I feel like it, it's one of those places you, you feel where it's still safe, but it, it just doesn't give off that, that sort of energy. Davey is able to stack on by taking out Renegade. Plexios making their way up. Cocktail even dealing with a proximity mind as your players waiting from down below, not expecting Plexios to be pushing all the way up from plates. The repel in, it's gonna have to be a spray. Double kill for Davies, down goes Sloth. There's only two players remaining in Cole and Frosted. And I believe they're sitting right down below trying to hold sight best they can. And that's the problem with the second floor, or sorry, a third floor hold. If you're not able to properly take all the time away from the attackers, you're gonna leave your remaining defenders in a rock and a hard place as Frosted, on the frost of all operators is jumping between rooms trying to find a safe angle and I hate to break it to you there is not a single area of this floor that will be safe as you try to break try to give yourself the room and you have to wonder left to right five attacks you're looking for cool going on to this aggressive peek upstairs you got to collect onto that frag but it's hard when you spring the trap plexios able to collect yet another frag to their name 11 and 3 in this matchup an absolute mad man the senate going for the plant spring the trap will be frosted dealing with the contention from up above what a flick down goes wow. davies but plexios able to find it as you cannot keep flicking and flicking it's too hard to do that one as round six you and Degree aren't chumps. No. They're not. This is they, a talented they're, they're good. team. Like they, they're, they're playing good. quite well. Just shut down at the last minute. It's really tough to see, and I don't think the scoreline reflects that. No. Uh, I mean, a lot of these rounds have been pretty close. Right? We had a 4v2 for UND Green. We had a 1v1. You know, we've had a handful of close rounds. Lebanon Valley just keeps pulling it out of their sleeves. They really do. Um, the, the absolute massacre on the top floor that I want to mention. Uh, Und, they're trying to change the pace, but they're trying to get aggressive. I genuinely think at this point, if North Dakota University takes a step back and just baits Lebanon Valley into firefights that they think they can win, or even better, Baits them into trying to take a firefight and then leaving right before the firefight happens, which is what they should have been doing on Cocktail rather than losing three bodies there, right? That could be the thing that gives them a chance on this defensive half. But right now, they're down zero to five things, and that is just an absolutely brutal scoreline to be it's crushing. looking at. It's, it's crushing. It's crushing. It, it is soul-numbing. It's... It, that that's the kind of scoreline that you look at and just go well i guess i'll just play my best game and then you go into autopilot yeah you, you it's that active mindset i i talked about me questioning lvc and it's, it's a really quick point that i made but it's one that i really stressed with a lot of teams that i i, I stress for especially in esports more than anything else it's the question what am i doing at why i can pause a vod at any single moment question any of these lvc players and say what are you doing and why and if, if, I, if I catch you during a round, anytime I pause, what am I doing and why, without an active mindset, or even if I'm there reminding you to have that active mindset, you can take your game to the next level. So if you're a Siege player, if you're in any esports player, Valorant, anything you can go into autopilot for, question yourself, what am I doing and why? Why is this important to my team? Cool, why are you pushing the co-check and check-in front door? How is this important to your team? And I, I'm, you're able to hold down that hallway and that's why. But it's just about having that active mindset. Why are you doing exactly these actions? And you don't always need to explain yourself. Sometimes you let that gut instinct as a player take over. But it needs to have a lot of impact. You need to make that positive impact on your team. Renegade Spring, why do you see it valuable to take this peak? To get the man advantage going my way. Do you have the advantage in peaking this? Most likely not. And, there, and, and I'll digress, but it's that active mindset that you need to constantly consider. Warden in a tough spot. Absolutely no way he can peek this prep window. And so much pressure mounting from the bakery side. At any moment, this is going to explode. And we're still in a 5v5. Lots of long angles being held down by UND Green. But if LVC has anything to say about it, they're already going to start cutting them off. Warden down, out of the count. And with an aggressive play, Lexios has put himself in and finds another. 
Oh, Plexios able to get out three. Make that four for Plexios. Springing a trap on the site, looking for the ace, hunting for it. Sloth inside freezer, looking towards the window. Can they find even a single body from the side Attackers of LVC? Plexios sitting on the Capitao, knows where to look for this angle. Can they find the ace? Spraying for it. Sloth waiting, shuts down Plexios. Can they isolate the 1v1? Can they keep it going? This is the energy we've been waiting to see from them, but no, Davies with a long angle all the way from cooking behind the entire metal chassis will allow for LVC on the cusp of match and series point in your NECC Champions League division. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the grand finals, the match that you hope to be the closest, and we're sitting here on the final map. Side swap has just occurred. Lebanon Valley is leading against the University of North Dakota. Sorry, North Dakota University green roster. Six to zero. Ouch. Ouch. That is painful. That's hard to look at if you're a UND Green fan. Lebanon Valley, though, they're happy and they are going into this half ecstatic, but we do have the side swap. This is an opportunity right now. UND Green can change the pace, right? I mentioned that this map can be very sided. That doesn't necessarily mean Attackers defender sided mean or attacker sided. We see it go defender sided or attacker sided a lot of the time, right? One or the other. It's going to be a perfect reverse sweep, and I, I don't know how much. Listen, you're talking to the, one of the most optimistic I, casters you will ever meet, Yali, and I, I don't know. I rarely that's do not know. That's right now. I'm sorry, Banks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can see it happening. I, I can see you and D getting, getting this reverse. I can see it happening. But it's going to be a long uphill battle if they're going to pull it off. Yeah, Lee, I've been wrong just one too many times today, and I, I, you know what? This is the one time I'd love to be wrong. I want to see UND Green come back from this one. But look at the play style from LBC. They have kept the gas, or their foot on the gas pedal. Are they going to go for a couple more aggressive peaks than they should? Most likely, yes. Reliable getting ready for it. Springing the trap, running out, not going to happen. I, I, I'm left with a lot of questions here. Now, the reason why I keep saying questions is because LBC has the formation. They have all the power and that they are looking for in this matchup. If we go and look at UND Green, their formation, they're not getting set the way that they typically should. They're feeling slow. Tell me, what are you doing? Why? You collected, oh, there's a player inside of a bathroom. Good with the nade. But the problem that I'm seeing is that you are not necessarily ready for exactly what things will bring. Reliable, first of all, brick was able to spring the trap and jumping into reading room. And that's with the shotgun, not exactly what you'd expect, but a very welcome change of pace. UND yeah, able to I'd collect. Like to, I'd like oh, to point ahead. out with Brick too. He has been the opening pick, or sorry, the opening death in four rounds of the defending side. Now finally Ooh. finding the opening pick with his aggression and pull, bringing it right back after him. And a second as well, finally shut down, but that's giving yourself a two to four lead. Now you and Degree has the option to do what they do best, collect information, look for the kills, and there, there it we is. go! You and Degree fighting their first on the map. Is this the beginning of the end for LVC? That was clean. Yeah, that was nice. Oh, that great. that's that copium over here. I, I got to get a whiff of that. <laughs> <laughs> There's one. We'll see how many they can claw back. They haven't they haven't won me for just yet. And it, they really did spring the trap there. I was not expecting that as we had a, a few players that were not on the same pacing as the others. Cole, we mentioned their ability to spring the trap and go in on their own, but they still had a little bit of assistance. They had a, a clear comms. And sometimes when you throw enough um, stuff at the wall, some of it has to stick. Pasta, that's the word, pasta at the wall. Yeah, but the thing is, right now, everything that they throw at the wall has to stick. They only have to lose one round, which at the end of the day, you can play near perfect siege. W7M at the Atlanta Major, if you watch them, they played near perfect siege, as perfect as we've probably ever seen in this in this entire esport. They still lost rounds. You know, they still lost rounds. Yep. Is U and D green? Are they going to play perfect siege? We'll see. Will LVC right. play perfect siege? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Some teams just don't know how to finish a match. 
Oh, there's so many questions to be to be asked, and, and the only thing that will answer it is time. Time will tell in this case. Will LVC get a little bit too aggression? Another thing that they can even opt to go for is if they feel that they are very good at playing that retake type of game, they can go and leave site and come back once there's a case or once the, their opponents try to make an impact. But all it takes is one LVC player. It doesn't have to be Plexius. It can be any one of them to just step up in a very dominant way. And great use of the Flores drone, but you're going to get muted out. Deal with that sooner rather than later. And that's a big use of the, the Twitch being banned out in this matchup. He was actually banned out by UND Green, so that must be hurting a little bit. As uh, I would have expected them to want to have the, the Twitch in their possessions. They're the ones using it to great effect. Once again, inside. Oh, that's a great use. you got to make sure that you have someone there ready to deal with Emporium, but able to go and maneuver around the Twitch drone. The Senate will be able to Ooh. take out Renegade. That's your ace. That's a really tough person to lose, all from playing inside a prep room. Case down right on the door. Cole able to find the Senate. That's the mute being refragged inside. Meanwhile, Emporium behind inside Bakery has an A. Cook right behind them. Down they go. Bakery control. Now in the hands, undoubtedly, for UND Green, they have to be wary of the red corridor. As Bricks the Bowen, who's been holding it, waiting for it. Sloth takes out Davies. Plexios, reliable. The remaining two players, reliable, holding around front door as Plexios make their way in. Reliable will hit a Claymore, and inside of sight, Plexios able to find one. They're gonna have to find three more, go for the revive onto their downed comrade of Reliable inside a double door. But they've definitely exposed their location briefly. Holding long, Cole going for the plant. This is exactly what you wanna have, the revive. But you need to have information. You should be turning to hold that hallway if you're brick. And now with this lack of information, they can go and continue to rotate up. Reliable can't push necessarily into this. It's going to have to wait for the capital to rotate down. Plexios, way in. That's a second on the round. Down goes Cole. They can continue to imprint and make more progression towards site inside a freezer. Spraying down that hallway. Brick will find Reliable. Ten Plexios, the fragging machine of this matchup, makes some magic happen. Looking for it. Nope. Brick will shut them down. And that's the second round for UND Green. UND Green suddenly turning it on, and I know what LVC is looking at. They're saying, oh, these guys can't handle aggression. Look at what we just did on attack. We're getting in their faces. We're going, ah, we're getting aggressive, and it's not working on defense. Hang on, because UND Green, what they're doing right now is they're feeding it right back to them, and Lebanon Valley has not once in this entire game proved their ability to step away from the aggression i see it over and over again a team gets aggressive and you just want to be aggressive right back you want to start swinging attackers need to look you want to start throwing punches bombs. that can't be done it doesn't work like that you have to expect what your opponents are going to do instead of playing to make a mistake you have to play to force your opponents to make a mistake Lebanon Valley has not proven themselves able to do that once in this entire matchup. If you and D Green can keep the gas pedal on the floor for the rest of this map, they might be able to pull off an overtime win. That's a big ask, and I, 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 saying it and doing it are two completely different mm. things, and the drones escaping, three drones from the side of UND going the way of LVC are not, not the best sort of... Uh, I mean, you'd want and the, the drone of renegade almost getting taken out there as well uh, a very sticky situation if you ask me you want to have as much action as possible but the way that they were able to attack this top floor previously should not be slept on but that was a per you you can't just shake by like the the perfect half that lebanon valley had it's it's there's no denying it and we see that same aggression from brick you have the dokubi your dokubi should not be your first point of contact that needs to be something that goes in slightly later that can use those drones use the information that has been given to the team renegade is the one on repel and will most likely be the first point of contact in this game I like the way that this is being played because while Reliable is in that position, he's trying to be a little bit more reliable and just get out of that position. He wants to stay alive. He wants to predict what the opponents are going to do, right? He's currently one in five. He's not looking for picks. He's just looking to waste time. Maybe he's looking for picks. Hey, there's oh, you always want that pick. Reliable, not quite a, oh, you always want it, but you don't need to look for it. 
Okay, all they need to do right now is slow down UND Green, and by being offsite, he's doing a fantastic job at that just all on his own. Yeah, Sloth left with more oh, questions than where they are. Oh, there we go. Nicely done, Cole. And that's going to be Rick able to get camps. Wow! Okay, this is a uh, round being flipped on its head, and we have the Gridlock Track Stinger sent through the rooftop. Drone being sent out. Emporium is going to be very important as they're holding down Cigar and can stop a lot of these default plans. You also have the Warden of Davies sitting inside. This is an entire lineup, a setup, if you will, from LBC. Catering, trying to wait for the plant to come down. The Senate on the Thorn also waiting for those key impact points, playing the exact same way Frostwood. This is meant to really tailor to UND green overextending but they're not going to do that playing for pick by pick waiting for each other to get into position these don't be phone calls there's no mute to go and disable this this information game that has been so prominent in the second half spraying trying to find the war and will be renegade not able to collect knowing they have case they have more important things to do plexios now it's like cocktail bar down goes the senate as a form of brick flash up Waiting, trying to find the frost, and it's gonna be a cleanup of flawless round from UND Green. What is going on? I don't even understand reality at this point, Yali. I'm telling you, it's exactly what I said. UND Green turned on the lights. They went from autopilot to flow state. They stepped up and they are prepared for every single swing that comes their way. And because of that, every time Lebanon Valley makes a swing, it is a mistake. They are losing the firefights. UND Green has turned on their brains and they are performing at a maximum capacity right now. And LVC, they need to put them on ice. They need to take a step back. They need to be the ones playing passive, forcing UND Green to make the mistake. That's why they're taking a timeout. They have to cool down now because if they keep making mistakes, if they keep being the ones swinging and dying early on, this can very quickly go to a 6-6. Six, six. This is how these comebacks happen. Exactly hate... like this. I will say though, even if they cool down, we've seen it over and over and over again with UND Green. They get the information, they call an X, and they do it. And they win the round. That's what they do. I don't think everyone for LBC is taking their foot off the pedal. I, I just think that you have key important players we saw a really good point to look at the scoreboard and reliable senate and emporium and i'm not going to discredit their performances in this matchup because the utility they have brought to the table has definitely turned the table uh, and and really allowed for davies and plexios to really frag out but this this is the argument when you have five players eight and eight six and seven six and six nine and six five and six all these players are now coming to the table. When you have five players with the capability of getting those frags and shutting down your team, that makes a really big difference in turning the tide and a consistent team is better than a show up team. But the thing is, and I'm gonna say it again, call me a pessimist all you want, but I am a realist in this scenario. LVC, with their fragging capability of Davies and Plexios, all they need is one more show up, one more crazy performance from them, and this entire game is done, this entire match is done, and we are gonna be crowning our champions. Slap that on a t-shirt, What's What's UND got in store? <laughs> yeah, what's UND got in store? I mean, it's a new site. So we, yeah. we haven't seen we haven't seen the middle floor yali so i i'm expecting more of, i i want to see the sand which i don't think we're going to see it but we could see the cookie cutter as always <gasps> oh i see him the wall behind him make sure that yeah, there's a chance here but nothing yet und I, I is looking for this calm. this is the und thing this is what they keep doing over and over again and LVC, I think, is responding to it well. They're not falling to the pressure. They're not taking the aggression because they don't need to. They have time advantage. Uh -oh. Davies is getting caught in a really weird position here. No one able to access cams when you have all five alive and a Dokubi call going off. Reliable sitting on white stairs. This, this sort of tight, this sort of push is very catered to having you and you have to. Im have some form of aggression you can't jump in and that aggression might be brick on the third floor as they're gonna sound their second phone call 
waiting for it. You have a few different options here. Two players of Emporium as well as Plexios. Some huge fraggers on the second floor. Plexios going and playing by pallets. What I need to highlight here and emphasize in this sort of scenario is that you're at a minute 20 and you have not pressure the entire any part of the east side you need to get a lot more pressure there and i'm very scared for you and d green as they have not initiated any sort of coverage uh, they are initiating this push right something strong that we've seen from you and d green are these aggressive executes later in the round we've got a minute left the sledge hitting that He's gonna expect it. Frosted, oh. dusted off the board. Reliable, finally picking up his second on the match. And now suddenly he's in a difficult situation, but he's still got players coming after him. Emporium on a second, and it's finally gonna be the death of Reliable. But UND Green has found themselves in a disadvantage for the first time this half. Brick, swinging around, has to find this kill in the Plexios. They're gonna drop down the hatch, looking for the machine pistol oh. kill. Hit was shot from Brick. Gonna drop, finds Plexios. Unaware, but no Plexio swings for the SMG level. Good for one, good for two. Down goes Cole, refrag by Davies, but no! It's gonna be LVC to come out on top from the Valkyrie that stayed alive inside a train museum. And your Rainbow Six Siege champions of LVC have been crowned. Absolutely dominant performance, and yes, North Dakota University looking strong there at the end, looking like they might bring it back, but at the end of the day, LVC, they showed that they have. Say it with me, the adaptability to change the...